punters and dribblers, you motherfuckers. Boys you're lucky. and girls, mums you're lucky. and daddies. Big, big, big. What does that big, make you think of? Big, 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 you may be listening to this on it's sold out, so technically it may not be out, but it is out. Big Day Rosé Magnums are on sale right now. Hello Sport.shop. Do not miss the opportunity to fucking carry around a Magnum of a Big Day Rosé and be the life of the party. Be the big dick. You know what I mean? Or vagina. Listen... There's nothing that gets you going like rosé. We had a rosé party a couple of weeks ago, and when I say that a room full of dribblers pounding rosé like, gets the mood going, like I am not saying that because I'm a rosé baron. I'm saying it because it's true. One of the great moods all time. It's a mood setter, and it tastes fucking great. You're going to miss out. If you don't be quick, big day rosé, big thick magnums, ready to rip, ready to tear, beautiful for party time, beautiful for silly season, beautiful for horizontal season, Edward. Take them to Pantown. HelloSport.shop. You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. How you feeling, Tom? I'm hungover, Eddie, my friend. Punters and dribblers, your dads went out last night on it was the pretty, town. It was a pretty responsible night, though. I was pretty impressed with this. Well, the venue sort closed, so we went home. Yeah. Would you have... Would you have? If it opened, if it remained opened, I probably would have had a few more jammos, yeah. Yeah. True. You True. know what I mean? I was prepared to go longer, but... The venue was closing. It was a Wednesday night. You know when they start looking at you? Yeah. They were pretty good, though, in fairness to them. Like, they cleaned up around us for a while. They let us leave. We were the last people in there, I'm pretty sure. That we And we did get Jemisons when there was still no one in there, and they yeah. let us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And, you know, we obviously caught up with some our good friend, Lloyd of the Stars. He was obviously there. Really good to catch up with Lloyd of the Stars, yeah. Isaac Carey. Um, you know... He's still the best lawyer in the business. Without a shadow of a doubt. Doesn't even come close, really. I mean, if you, if you need some lawyering done, look to Izzy. Yeah. Lawyer to the stars. Uh, Tom and I... We've been working all week. Had been working our fucking dicks to the bone, punters and yeah, you, you know the drill? A, you ever heard of a film set? Yeah, sorry. Belt sander sort of stuff. Sorry, film set stuff. Anyway, we Lights, wrapped. camera action. We wrapped, which is a film term. Mm. Uh, you wouldn't get it You wouldn't get it Most of you wouldn't get it You wouldn't get it But basically Oh before we actually carry on To just our glorious film set Probably worth reminding you That Big Day Rosé Magnum's on sale tonight 6pm HelloSport.shop Big boys and girls Those Magnum's HelloSport.shop Back to it Eddie Film set Lights, camera, action We were wrapped You don't get it You don't get it you don't get it. Sinking, but there is... Sinking audio and camera, you know? You wouldn't yeah. get it. Safety. Eddie, Eddie, bang. Safety. Do you know what safety is? Do you know what a safety inspector is? Yeah. It's a big jacked guy telling you to put a car in neutral. That's what safety is. That's what safety is. Yeah. Uh, back to the safety spot and put it in safety. Make place. safe. Make safe. What's make safe? That's neutral. You wouldn't get it. You wouldn't you know, get you're it. You're not a big film set yeah, guy. Yeah, sorry. Not a big, you know, it's not a big deal. It's all right. You're not. Never seen a film set. Clearly, you never made anything safe. Yeah, listen, we're not all made for the film set life. No. You know what I'm saying? Hey, how about this? You want to do that again maybe 20 more times? Then make safe. Yeah. Film set life. Although, Tom and I are more of like one take guys. We're, we are big one no take No one guys. would do more one takes than us. Correct. No one. Like, the amount of one takes we do is yeah. shocking. Like, hey, guys, generational on-camera talent, could you please do this? Yep. We've got, a, we've got some time, though. We've got a whole day to do it, so you do it. Oh, fuck, you nailed it straight away. All right, let's 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 all go home to our families early. Yeah, we were sending people home to their families early. Yep. If you know what I'm saying. Repatriation. Yeah, not because they'd been killed, but because the job was done. No, the job was done. They weren't dead. They were fucking going home to their families because we were nailing everything. The directors were like, we've never seen anything like this. You ever heard of a fucking standing ovation? That was basically what we got every time they call cut. 
Pretty much. It'd be like we're at Khan. Yep. And you get like a 25 minute fucking standing O. That's right. That's Which right. was a little off putting, but. Listen, you learn to live with it, don't you? You learn to live with it. Film set life, you wouldn't get it. Like, you know, we're getting our makeup and shit done, which is, yeah. You know, it's not for everyone. Listen, it's but if you're on a but if you're on a set, if you're on a set, sorry, I, I've been in, I'm in wardrobe. Yeah. Oh, God. <sighs> uh, go, better go sit in a wardrobe. Sorry. <laughs> have you been through? Have you been through makeup yet? Yeah. No. Nah, sorry, I've got to go get hair and makeup on. Are you mic'd up yet? No. Sorry, I'll go get mic'd up. Just gonna get my makeup done <laughs> um, before I change my wardrobe uh, and get my mic on. Get my mic on um, and go. cut. Yep. Uh, action. Action. Do you know what that means? Yeah, that bet means, you don't. I bet you don't. Action is when you start doing the thing they want you to do. So they'll be like, is everyone ready? Like, you know, quiet on set and shit. And Lights, like, camera. Everyone, everyone's ready. Yeah. Like, everyone gets ready. All the cameras, make sure they're ready. And sometimes they'll be pausing. I'm not ready. Audio might not be ready. Cut. And then they'll go, action. Yep. And then you get into it. You do it. You and do then the they'll thing. go, and then they'll go, cut. Yeah. I think we got it. I think we got it. One take. Yep. You guys are amazing. So, so, like, basically just giving you a bit of an insight into what it's like to be on a film set for three days, yeah. working your dick to the bone. Yeah, just a little peek behind the curtain. Mm. You know, I will break for lunch now. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll break for lunch. Sweet. We probably wouldn't get that either. You wouldn't understand what the breaking for lunch is. Uh, <laughs> not big film set guys or girls. Um, <laughs> so, when you're fucking climbing into our pee holes, being like, where's the fucking podcast? Uh, you wouldn't get it, dude. Listen, although... <sighs> You know, I don't expect you to completely understand the film set life because, you know, very few of us get to experience it. But you, you can't record podcasts whilst on set. You can't. That's the one thing. We can do Which, many and, things. But it, but it really did seem like a lot of punters and dribblers thought you could. Yeah. Like, I just just stop filming what you're filming. Yeah. Stop being the talent, the hero talent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and you go into a podcast. Yeah. It's like, you can't do that. We can't just call cut in the middle of a scene. A scene is like what they call a thing that you're doing. In the middle of a scene. No. With other talent. With there. other talent there. There's fucking talent everywhere. Yeah. Like, I can't just stop that. Like, no. I can't be... In we, we don't get to call cut. That's not our job. No. We follow we follow instructions. The we dire can, directions. Well, directions. From the director. That's the guy, like, sort of running the show. Yeah. Um, if you didn't know. You can't just... You can't just fucking hop out of the car and, and fuck off and do whatever you want. Although we did hear we did yesterday hear that someone. someone did exactly that. <laughs> he'll, he'll, go on, he'll go unnamed, <laughs> but basically he'd had enough. He was on a similar shoot and goes, I'm over it. I'm and, out. And left. Good for him. Hopped in the car and fucked off. Not the way we operate. We're not like that. We're professional. Cut. Um, we don't we don't leave until the job's done, which means getting the big. We're wrapped. Yeah, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Anyway, we uh, we went to a wrap party yeah. afterwards yesterday. That's so. What that is, punters and dribblers, is, is like basically a party for when you've wrapped everything. Yeah, and they throw it for you. They throw you a wrap party in, in your honor. Yeah. So we went to that, and then we also had our own wrap party after we left. And obviously, you, you bring your lawyer to a rap party. Yeah, well, you have to. Yeah. You have to. And you sit down, and you drink schooners, and you drink tequilas on the rocks, yeah. and you drink j jamos on the rocks, and, and you watch and you watch fucking people beefs. punching on. Shout out to the Butch, Nikita, getting it done. New Australian title holder. Super welterweight title. Blokes are fucking beast, just he is. quietly. Dropped first round, back but, up. But then when he got back up, I'm like, oh, he's not he's not rattled at all. I was like, when he was dropped first round, I was like, holy shit, dude. This is this might be it for the Butch. Dropped early. Dropped in no. the first minute, maybe. Yep. He smoked. And then proceeded to beat the fucking piss out of him. <laughs> yeah, it was a fucking... Oh, Biggsy boy, Biggs or Biggs, Briggs? Dylan Biggs. Dylan got, Biggs got pumped. He got the piss bashed out of him. Yeah, he did. Like, there was no urine left in the bastard. No, dude. No, he was dry. He, yeah, he had his bladder drained. Uh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That thing was as dry as an old Jats Bicky, that bladder. <laughs> it would have been absolutely bashed dry. Oh, bashed dry. <laughs> bashed literally all the piss out of him. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah. Sanction bashing, though. Like, it wasn't a... It, oh, no, it was it sanctioned. He didn't jump him or anything. It was a sanctioned piss removal, but like... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was all above board. Yeah. But the ref had seen enough. Yeah. <laughs> this bloke's got no more urine in him. <laughs> the fucking ring's covered in piss. 
slip over. It became a hazard, I think. It did, but it was good. Yeah, good honest, good honest flogging. Anyway, and that's why we're just a l- probably a little bit fucking ginge, a little bit ginge today. A bit ginger spice. Nothing crazy, nothing crazy, but a little bit of ginger spice doesn't help that I got up and trained this morning because I'm a fucking animal who's built real different. Yeah. Um, but You've been it, constructed in a different way. Yes. I, like, most people are built a certain way, but then some of us are built in, a, in an entirely different way, a better way, uh, a way that almost doesn't make sense, but, yeah. but you know, but is, it's just reality, right? So forgive me if I'm a little flat, but you're going to have to get the fuck over it. Yep. Okay. Because I've been working on a set for three straight days. Grueling. And getting there at like seven in the morning. Like Call gen- times. Generally, generally what you'll find on, on sets, film sets, is, is there's going to be an early call time. Yeah. Call time is the on the call sheet, yep. which is what you get sent, which you is get a run, sheet. a run sheet of the yep. day. Yep. Your call time is the time you need to arrive, usually to go into hair and makeup and wardrobe and to get the mic- mic'd up. Yeah, you might have a bit of brekkie. Might have some brekkie provided by... Uh, if over to the set. John. Yeah, take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I did find interesting, Tom, was that on the run sheet, everyone had their first and last name, and you and I just had Tom and Eddie. Yeah, like Seal. Like Seal. Yeah. We got a bit of Seal about us, a yeah. bit of Madonna about us. Yeah, Seal, Madonna, uh, who else would you have? Cher. Cher. Beyonce. Beyonce. Bono. Bono, Eminem, Eminem, R- Ronaldo, Ronaldo. Well, his name's Cristiano. Cristiano I wasn't talking about that Ronaldo. The other one. Yeah, yeah. that's not a bad point actually. He does have a name. Yeah, but what just no one uses that's it. That's a great fair point. point. It's a fair point. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a good. You you make a right. That's a good observation. We're basically like all of them. <laughs> Makes sense though. Yeah. Cool shit. Anyway, film film set rhetoric. Cool shit and stuff. <laughs> um wouldn't get it. Lighting. Wouldn't get it. Lighting, fucking uh cloud cover. Uh we got about twenty. Cloud seconds. predictor. Cloud mm. predictor. That was a fucking that, <laughs> that was th- that, th- that was one of the most woo woo bits of fucking film set kid I've ever seen. So it was this like bloke- this guy, this like monocle that this dude would <laughs> Fucking hold up to his eye and have it up at the clouds, and he'd be like, "Oh, we got about twenty seconds till the fucking lights ready." I'm like, "How do you fucking know that, dude?" And he's like, "Oh, this thing tells you." I'm like, "But how do you know the timing?" He's like, "Vibing it." I was like, "I thought so." Was that? No, his- you didn't think so. You thought it was a cloud predictor, and you were like, "I was, dude, hey, that thing's amazing, bro. Tells you exactly how long until I mean, the cloud come." And I go, "Horse shit." No, it's not. Cunt. Yes, it is. I no, said, it's not. And I, I said, said, "I, I go, said, he's vibing it, dickhead." I said, "How the fuck is he doing that?" I and, said, "What the fuck is that? How the fuck is he doing that?" I'm like, "I go, is he fucking able to tell the time that that's coming?" And you go, "I bet you he's vibing it." And then I asked him, and he said he was vibing it. Yeah, but that's before the, that, I wasn't saying he had some that, magic you th- fucking counter. You, you dumb thought he fuck. had a, you thought he had I a said, magical monocle. Oh my god, you're an idiot. You did. Okay, okay. I thought he had a you magical monocle. You go, bro. Monocle. That guy's got a magical <laughs> monocle. <laughs> And he can predict. He can predict. He, the cloud. he knows exactly when the cloud cover. Yeah. I go. You notice how he said twenty seconds till it's clear, and then five seconds later we go, it became clear. That would yeah, imply was, vibe, which is exactly what I said. No, it's not what you said. I said that's, the, that's how I told the story. I said I go. What the fuck is he using there? How the fuck is he getting the timing right? And then you go. I bet you it's vibe. He's getting the times wrong. <laughs> And then I asked him, and I go, how the fuck are you doing that? What is this thing? Because it seems like one of the most woo-woo bits of apparatus I've ever seen in my life. But you're not listening to me. You, when you bring up the magical monocle the first time, I go, he's getting the times wrong. He's vibing it. You, unconvinced... Went and asked him yourself. Well, no, so you were siding on, on the side of magical monocle. No, what I was doing was giving the operator of the magical magical <laughs> monocle an opportunity to peddle his wares <laughs> and tell me what the fuck he was doing, because I didn't understand why this. He also still had glasses on, like sunnies. He was yeah. looking through the fucking sunnies yeah. and the magical monocle. Listen, how does this work? Listen, he yes. didn't even really explain it. To no, me. he didn't, and but because he doesn't want you to know, like you just there's there's jobs on film sets that you didn't even know existed. That's exactly it. That you didn't even think 
was there or that was needed and then well not even needed you didn't even think it was a thing and then you see him you're like well yeah that's exactly how the fuck would that get done otherwise magical monocle being one of them yeah which was important because lighting's important on film sets yeah. don't know if you know that yeah it, but I, I guess if you've never been on a film set like most of you then it, it would be safety operator i know i'm going back there but like i i obviously knew that safety was something that would be of high importance on a it's, film set it's pretty to the degree with which it was shocked me yeah it the the safety was so over the top yesterday and the day before that and the day before that that's three days on set uh that i kept thinking the whole time how the fuck did alec baldwin shoot someone yeah like who what? like honestly bro i was like the safety on these things is like over the fucking top like to the point of almost suffocation so the fact they were getting around with a fucking like it just seemed yeah, crazy you, to me that you, that was possible. How do you kill someone on a set when? Well, maybe they don't have the right safety though. Like, I mean, if we had the guy that we had, maybe Alec wouldn't have shot someone. That's true. I think that's well. Obviously, they didn't have people that were you know elite at their job. They didn't have good safety. They weren't making safe. Really. Well, he wasn't in neutral, Alec. That's for sure. He was in not. gear. No, that he was fucking gear. <laughs> fucking oath, he was. Uh, anyway, that's film set life. Uh, not a big deal. Um, not a big deal. Just don't want anyone to like. Nothing's going to change here. No, I think that's important, Tom. I think it's important to to just make sure the audience, the punter and the dribbler, know that we're still the same people. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. obviously, it's different now. <laughs> <laughs> but like, we won't, we won't change at all. Hey, hey, we won't change. No. The money and the fame won't change. No, us. no, no. It'll, it'll change a little bit, but like, yeah, you. No one can be like. I mean, I'm different from every inter. I'm different from the interactions I've had this very day. Exactly right. You know what I mean? So obviously, yeah. change is inevitable, but like, largely, I would compare it with like the film set life. Like once you once you've been on film sets and life afterwards, it's sort of you know before school how you couldn't read or write and you didn't know how to interact socially with anyone you didn't basically know anything about the world and then afterwards you're just like this complete human like an yeah. adult you know yeah, you're yeah, very yeah, measured yeah, and yeah. rounded and you got manners and you know how to read and write all that sort of thing yeah. that's what i compare it to we're evolved yes but we won't change no we won't change and we're not divas either. No. Which I think is important. Because like what you'll find on some sets is that is that there'll be divas. Of there's, well, listen, there's, is, there's an opportunity to be a diva on set because basically, you know, you've got your own trailer and fucking, you mm. know, food gets brought to you and that fucking fan, you know, like, I mean, like literal fans because it gets hot. Mm. Um, there's an opportunity to be, to, to be a diva if you were to take that opportunity and run with it. Not us. Not us. Not us. We would get ourselves changed. Yes, we would. We would change ourselves. We'd get a little bit of help. Well, I couldn't do everything by myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I didn't want to have to go get the clothes. No. No. They were run over to us. <laughs> anyway, nothing's going to change you. Just nah. I just want to get that hey, out. Hey, nothing's changing. Just the same old Tom and Eddie. Yeah. Just a little bit... <laughs> Just a little bit different. Just a little bit different. The podcast this week is always brought to you by our fucking best friends at Neds. They are the, the number one betting platform on planet Earth. If you like to have a punt, and not everyone does, but if you do, Neds is where we do it. And there is a multitude of reasons why. One, there's the private group where we can all go in there and share our bets and have a laugh and a giggle and shoot the shit. The other reason is the profiles, which is a new thing where you can basically go and see what I've been betting on, what Eddie's been betting on, Sebo's been betting on, Tobler, but that's a joke. Like, you don't actually want to see what Tobler's been betting on. It's just a – there's there's an elevated element of interactivity within the betting platform, again, if you're into it, punters and dribblers, that is best in class. Best in class, an elevated level of interactivity. Yep. I mean, if that doesn't want to make you join Neds, what will? Neds are best in class. They've upped their app game. It's now delicious. It's not nutritious, but it may as well be. Phenomenal product. I'm, I, in my opinion, think it's best in class without a shadow of a doubt. Their markets are all late. You've got the profiles. You've got the about even group as well. You can join with the code Dribbler. Things I've already said. But 
I'm reiterating because they're important. Mm. Okay? Neds is best. We're the best. Are you the best? Because if you're the best, join Neds. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on screen or visit the website. Before you back into it, um, it's probably worth uh, just getting this underway over here because we have not decided on our cocktails yet for the Christmas party. No, we haven't, punters and jubilees. We haven't decided. We felt like some progress was made the other week. The Mai Tais were good, but Ronnie Blakey, friend of the show, uh, big hitter in the fucking surfing community. Shout out to your Ronnie. And the, uh, and the fucking pitch and putt golf world as well. Shorties. If you want to play, you know, the best pitch and putt course on hey, planet Earth. Whole fucking par three course, shorties. Get up Terry to Terry Hills. Hills get up to shorties. Out. Fucking great. Not nad, but nad. Not nad. But we're not paid for it because we're, we're good paid, blokes. But we did get those sweet little golf bags. We did. So we were gifted something. We were paid. Yes. Well, no, we, we were paid with bags. Paid with bags. Yeah. Not cool. those sorts of Not bags. those bags. Golf bags. Don't do that sort of stuff. No. Just play golf and live clean, honest lives. Uh, Ronnie Blakey pointed out that the Royal Hawaiian in Honolulu, hell of a joint, the Pink Palace, the hotel there, they do an incredible Mai Tai. We will be starting with that because I feel like... Yeah, I feel like a Mai Tai. I feel like a Mai Tai. An unbelievable Mai Tai. That's where my love for Mai Tais began, punters and dribblers, in Honolulu itself. Mm. At the Royal Hawaiian, was blind after one. It's not about that, just letting you know. Now, I still think that Mai Tais are a fucking huge sniff for the Christmas party. I think I'll vibe their leading right now. D or Dave made a pretty fucking dog shit pina colada last week. No yeah, offense. Two of them. And unfortunately for pina colada, they've now slipped out of the running. Well, they've, they've fallen down the fucking pecking order, that's for sure. But the concern we have is from a margarita Mai Tai perspective... Too acidic. Too acidic. Too much acidity. Because he's, he's... And listen, this is no disrespect to Dave. I don't know if you can hear, but his fucking margarita wasn't great either. No. So today what we've done is we've gone, make the Royal Hawaiian recipe Mai Tai. Make a Tommy's margarita, which is Tommy and I's fucking go-to. They make, call me Tommy Margarita. That's right. That's right. We're going to get him to make us a Cosmo because I don't mind him and we're thinking of the Sheilas. And we're going to get a Moscow Mule, who, which was suggested to us by a dribbler. <laughs> Moscow is that mule. all correct? That is correct. Those are the four on the menu today. All right. Now, did you put that pen in your especially to look like a hospo? Well, that's, this is my bartending get yeah, up. Okay. No, I like that. Wait, I'm not no, t- I like him in character, Tom. It's, that's why I'm asking. Hmm? What that would that you do with the pen in the bar? Oh, he's got, look at it, he's got the fucking you would, uh, stick in. You'd write down like little variations on recipes if you got orders and you needed to say like without this, without that, right. or yeah, just mark things so you'd remember. You no, know? that's cool. Tea towel as well. Mm-hmm. Um, none of those alcohols are a sponsor. No, they're not. Yeah. No one's paid to be here. No, um, but they can be. All right, Dave, which, so we're getting yeah. that Mai Tai going first. Yeah, the Mai Tai first. I will say this about the Moscow Mule. There is still the opportunity to have that there because it's just vodka and ginger beer. So if we got vodka and we got ginger beer as a mixer, we can have it there as well. See, that's eyes up footy. Yeah, it is. So we could sub... I might even just make a note to be like, bring some ginger beer along and we can make Moscow Mules. And if then, they're good. Yeah, we might not like we them. We might not like them. I'm not a huge ginger beer guy. I'm shocked by that. You strike me as a guy that would like fucking pound ginger beer into the core of the earth. Why is that? Just like, you know, just strike me as a guy who'd drink ginger beer over water. That's just not even a great explanation, so I'm not going to even get offended because I don't know if it's offensive. If I went into your house and opened it up and you had like a fucking door full of ginger beers, I wouldn't be shocked. <laughs> right, but I don't understand what that even means. Cause I don't know, you give beer off is, ginger beer is vibes. Is sweet drink? Like is you, it sugary you and get, shit? You just give off ginger beer vibes, that's all. There's a lot of sugar in it, I think. Yeah, right. It just, it was, a, it's a fucking, it's never really got me going, the old ginger Can I be honest with you? I don't know what it is. No, but I kind Why is it called ginger beer? It's obviously got ginger in it because it tastes ginger. Shout out to ginger, by the way. Ginger's unbelievable. On sushi. Worth pointing out that ginger unbelievable. So is wasabi. Yep. So is soy, soy sauce. sauce. I fucking love soy sauce. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Is that rain? It's rain. 
There's, uh, a bit of, there's been a bit of rain about. Yeah, there's been a bit of rain about. Tell you what, Monday, cunt of a day. Fucking humid, fucking overcast. I was squinting all day on set. <laughs> cunt of a day. <laughs> Tell you what made it worse, though, after a long, hard day on set. Getting oh, back to the yeah. studio and finding that Dio David falling <laughs> through the roof. <laughs> We had a cunt of a day on Monday. <laughs> An absolute cunt of a day. In the studio here, punters and dribblers, you won't know, but there's like a little sort of... I'd call it... A, it's not a landing. What is it? It's like a warning? No, internal no, roof. No, no, no. So what, what, j- j- f- close your eyes, punters close, and dribblers. Everyone close your eyes. Close your eyes and, w- and come on a journey with me yeah. and my mate Tom. Yeah, all right. So you're approaching a brick building and there are doors that you can see so before you get to those doors this, yep. you've walked through the brick wall and now you're in like a little bit of a space and there's a roof there's a roof directly above you not- and and then on both sides of you there's doors and glass you're not you're sort of outside but you're inside it's like a mini foyer it's, it's like a foyer that's in, in the building bit. so you're not outside anymore but you haven't come in the doors yet no. does that make sense you're just under a little undercover way so then when you come in and you come into this huge expanse this massive massive expanse and you turn around and you notice where you have been standing almost looks like a little box in the room yeah because above that box, there is more space up to the roof. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Now, on top of that box, we'll call it, for lack of a better term, some people without enough space have been storing things up there. Yeah, some things that are maybe too heavy. These people that we were talking about have also not adequately shored things up, nor have they run an eye over the structural integrity of the beams of any of it of any of it what's that made of listen what is that? you know what i think that the people in question were aware that it wasn't that structurally sound i think the people in question knew that they weren't load-bearing beams but the people in question were busy on set yeah and basically had big space. set guys big too set busy guys had space issues now when you're up there, you can see where you should and shouldn't step if you are to, you know, safely manoeuvre your way around this internal fucking roof bit that we've got. Uh, Dave, I imagine, obviously he can speak for himself, but I imagine Dave didn't give that as much consideration potentially as he should have and stepped on it with his full body weight and fell through it. Now, we are lucky. Silver Linings Playbook, Jennifer Lawrence, Bradley Cooper. The silver lining here is that Dave didn't fall all the way through the roof to the floor where he most likely would have broken his legs. (laughs) (laughs) And everything else. Fuck, man. And he also didn't cut himself on the numerous fucking uh, screws and nails that were... In the roofing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Listen, gods be good. Dave too light to break a roof. The big fella was looking after us. Dave didn't fall and shatter his femur and his tibia and his ankles and shit, requiring immediate surgery and almost certainly some some fake court, some fake joints. You know what I mean? Well, but also us having to like make up a cover story. Yes. Um, now, that didn't happen. He also didn't slice himself and bleed to death on the way down. What I think's happened, Tom, if I can just have a, you know, a proper think about this, mm. although you could argue that we probably shouldn't have stored stuff up there given it wasn't weight-bearing... Uh, no structural it, integrity. Th- there wasn't weight-bearing beams up there. I think you could also argue that only a really light man, like a man as light as a feather... Mm would make a stupid decision like stepping on beams. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm obviously like probably... Like, but you never hop up there, I'm do like you? I'm like five times the size of Dave. I've been on there multiple times. Now, I don't think I should have been, but I know where I was standing to be safe. Put it that way. I never went over to the far side of it because there was no safety beams that were... But on this side, around like the corners of it, where the curtain railing goes and where the fucking producer desk other uh, producer desk wall is 
That shit ain't falling. That's all structural and teg. I don't go fucking farting about in no man's land in the middle of it and fall through and fucking... Now, if I had fallen through, that beam that saved Dave would not have saved me. No, you would have shattered your legs. I would have. It would have so, been. A, it would have been a. He would have. Imagine 110 kilos coming. Fucking. <laughs> what? What? What is that? 12 foot? No. 12. Oh. 10 probably. 10 yeah. foot. Probably 10 foot fall yeah. onto yeah. tiles. Onto tiles. And Not the rest good. of the shit that you've fallen through. But thankfully, well. Thankfully, Dave, not injured and too light to fall In fact, through. I'd argue he's even more sprightly. Well, he's, he's again, he's better for the run. Yes. He's, he's way better for the run. Yeah. Cheetah death, lifts tell a tale. So that was our Monday. But. Sweating and squinting all day, coming into the studio, Dave's fucking falling through the roof. So then we had to basically, because it meant that you could essentially break into our studio because the whilst the doors were locked you could just climb up the fucking broken roof and get in so we had to do a very we had to jimmy a makeshift little tarp thing that wasn't securing the studio by any means but it was just more hopefully you know one it w- would be crooks and thieves would be like oh i don't know if that's actually it, i don't even think it was a crooks and thieves thing for me for me it was more like we acknowledge that this this has a roof missing, but this, <laughs> the tarp gives a sense of like, we're, we're on, on it. it. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, something's yeah. been done about yeah, this. Yeah, don't worry. We're on to it. Um, make sure Dave's mic is down, Tobler. Mm-hmm. Um, just because he's shaking cocktails. We're not silencing him. We're not trying to de-platform Dave like Dave's people would do to other people. That's exactly right. Um, we don't sink to their level. We don't sink to their level. So, thankfully, our good friend Tommy Tobler was able to... Of professional fame. Of professional fame. I believe, because he was he was the man on the scene. He yeah. was the first responder. He was rattled. He was, rattled. He was the first responder. He did, he did make sure that Dave was okay. That's the first thing he did. Yeah. And then um, he started filming. And then he started filming. But apparently he was pretty rattled. Yeah, I think Dave was, was quite rattled calm. than Dave was. Yeah, he was. You, you could tell, by the way, he called us when we were in the car. He's like, guys, like, I, uh, Dave's falling through the roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. okay. He's all right. Did Honestly. you think? Did you think your dad's going to yell, yell at you? No, I just thought I saw Dave. <laughs> <laughs> or Dave might have. Uh, um, I thought, well, Dave's life flashed before my eyes <laughs> at that point, and then I was just fucking wigged out because I was like, "That's so funny. How is this kid? Nah, he, he was fine. He was flexing when I got he, in here. Yeah, he was fine. Anyway, nothing. So, Nothing like a broom and a fucking couple of pairs of hands can't clean up. Well, mate, we t- you want to talk about fucking Mr. Handyman? I'm up there, bloody, with me ladder and me hammer, and I'm smashing out the rest of the jippo and pulling it down like a fucking real beast. I was just missing the steel caps. The jippo. The jippo, bro. Yeah, the fuck. I tell you what, jip. A lot of people wouldn't know this. Uh, not big jippo guys, yeah. but jippo fucking breaks really. Oh, easy. mate, you get a nice. You get a fucking. You get your hammer out, which we've got. I just yeah. smash the jippo around from the. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. From the uh, the fire alarms there. Yeah. Didn't want to take out the fireys. And I managed to just remove the Jippo. She was sweet. Oh, the Jippo came down she pretty She came down easy. pretty good. Makes a bit of a mess, Jippo, but nothing yeah. a broom can't nothing, fix. Nothing a producer and a broom can't fix. That's right. And a dustpan. Yeah. And a dustpan to get rid yeah. of Jippo. Yeah, you do. You're going to do a proper job. Well, Jippo dust. Jippo dust. Fucking fair income. It's It gets in there. It gets in there. That's it sure. gets on everything, Jippo dust. Yeah. So, um, anyway. but Tobler arranged for... The shit that the roof to be fixed the next day, which the turnaround. Oh, so who's the ad for? Who are we we're doing an ad to, for? We're about to. T- we're about to bloody shit. There was a now. very fucking. There's a very fuckable man who did. Who did the? <laughs> who came in to fix the who roof? Who came in to fix Shout it? Shout out to Zach. Shout out to yeah. Zach. He fucking must. Has he got a missus, Zach? He does. He was in here. He'd he root the house down, wouldn't he? I can imagine. It's well, a look healthy at the sex life at in. home. <laughs> I mean, him walking around here sweaty with his shirt off. Me, Willie, and Dave were all just staring at him. Yeah. You know what I like? He was in here the other day fucking mounting the stags for us. Oh, yeah. He's I didn't here. realize how hot he was at that time. Oh, I did. I knew he was like not a bad style of a bloke. But then when I saw him on the ladder with the shirt off, and again, we weren't, we were on set, punters and dribblers. You wouldn't get it. Uh, <laughs> so we didn't get to see him in the flesh, but. We certainly got photos sent to us and some videos sent to us. And him sweaty on a ladder, fucking putting Jippo up. Yeah. Fuck me. Well, he dead. wasn't putting Jippo well, up. Well, whatever. He's putting something up. I wasn't so here. So, Jip Rocker's different job, mate. Well, I wasn't here. So, you're a big Jippo guy. I don't know what the fuck he put up no, on. No, he him. did put the Jip Rocker up. Oh, there you go. That's what Thanks. I said. He did. 
Oh, he did. You just said he didn't. Didn't he? You said the Jip Rocker's got to come. No, the plaster. Plaster. You plaster. Did. Yeah, you're not a Jippo guy. Sorry, no, bud. Now, Correct. what I liked mostly, more than... Oof, that's a good my type. What I liked that. more than anything... Strong. ...about the photo yesterday was our boy Tobler with his shirt off as yes. well. Yes, let me get that photo up. One of the cutest things I've ever seen. First year apprentice. Mate, you know, apprentice. Unskilled labourer. The, ab- the apprentice seen his mate, who was fuckable. I'd give him a nine at least. Mate, he's jacked. We're going to have to get this photo in there as well. Tobler shirtless Ooh. with a spirit level. It's good. While the Jippo King, Zach, what's his business called again? TLD Constructions. TLD Constructions. Where's he based? Beaches? Beaches based. If you need a so Beaches babe is- to fix your shit, TLD Construction, Zach. I don't know if this is true or not, but I have it on good authority. He will work shirtless for an extra fucking 20%. I think he just works, works shirtless anyway. So listen, if you, if you like, if you like to watch your builder do building, he will allow you to be shirtless and sort of watch him as well. Fuck, he's in good nick, the cunt. Yeah. Wouldn't mind getting a tool belt. I <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Wouldn't mind getting a tool belt. He was wearing the fuck out of that tool belt. Yeah, we actually... <laughs> Tall sounds like he's fucking about to have a maz over there. <laughs> I reckon he's already had one. He's got a good-looking nail uh, hammer there as well. He's got his tape measure on there. Look at that spirit level. That's something we need to get. That's a, we need to get a good spirit level. If my spirit level isn't six, six and a half, seven foot, then I don't want to know about it. <laughs> I couldn't agree more, dude. You know what I mean? He's pissy little like he is my spirit level. Like, are we, are, we, are we getting fun? Are we fair dinkum or not? Cock, like, are we fair nah. dinkum here or not? I need a blue whale dick. You know what I mean? That's what I need. Some big monster spirit level. Yeah. If, if you're going to do a job, do it properly. Yeah, do it big. And do it big. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it level? Is it plumb? Is it level? Is it plumb? Is <laughs> it plumb? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's that's, like, that's, 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 that's... Spirit level rhetoric? Well, level, plumb. What's plumb, though? Plumb is, is it, is it fucking straight, straight up? Straight up, okay. Like, plumb. Like, you know, if we, when, when we get our big spirit level, because we're getting one, because we need one we get today. One. We actually do need one. In fact, you're, you need a spirit level... We'll just whack it up against that pole, see if it's plum. Yeah. I think that's what it means. Don't know. Uh, but we are getting one, so don't worry. We'll be able to tell you once you get it. Uh, TLD Constructions on the beaches, motherfuckers. Give him a well, Instagram or what? Has he got a yeah, gram? TLD Constructions on the Instagram. There you go. So give him a follow. And if you need some, some, some handyman stuff done, give him a fucking whirl because he's – I've I've run an eye over his his um his work and he's he's hot he's a high quality builder. TLD Constructions is he architectural home builders? Is that yeah? That's the one. Fuck yeah! Build dude. your house for you. Build your house. So we actually got a man who's like into you know he's in the house building game and he's just managed to squeeze in some time for some friends. He's got a missus, so he won't fuck you. So no 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 no. He's he's got a healthy sex life according to Tobler, which is <laughs> nice. I can imagine. <laughs> okay. Is that what you said earlier? I can imagine. You do imagine. Anyway, that was our Monday. Then we did the podcast because we don't fucking stop. So when you guys are like, you're fucking lazy, oh, where are you, what are you doing? That's what we were doing. We were fixing roofs well, pulling them down, and then getting hot construction workers in. My tight thoughts. I'm loving it. It's good. It's real good. Loving it. i tell you what's good. What, like when Dave first gave it to me, poey in terms of a bit too potent. And not in a bad, like it was just, it was very like, oof, this single person. As in like ball. David Pocock? Yes, exactly. Like my fucking, my, my Is ball. Like, like, s- like Senator Pocock? Yeah, yeah. Senator Pocock, Senator David Pocock uh, over a fucking ball at the bottom of a ruck pilfering. Bit yeah. poey. Yeah, big poey. But as the ice in there's just had a little bit of time to do a, a, just a subtle bit of melting, it's now... I am fucking all about the Mai Tai. So there is a reason behind the uh, the poeiness of this Mai Tai specifically. The Senator David Pocock. Of the, yeah, Senator David Pocock, uh, independent senator. Yeah. Um, 
because this Mai Tai is made with a float of dark rum, which means the dark rum isn't poured in the mix when it's shaken. It's floated over the top at the end, which is why you'll see it's a bit more clear at the top uh, than it is at the bottom. Uh, so you can mix it up if you want, or if you want a bit more poiness on the front, you can just go straight up. What would you suggest? Is, um, it, a, is it a horses for courses, run your own race, It is a bit of a horses for courses. Journey. If it was me, I would probably mix it in. You get all the nice flavors in there. You don't get rid of Because then maybe at the bottom end, it becomes a bit too sweet. The, if it's so the ones, the ones in Hawaii are really dark at the top and then yeah. light at the bottom. Yeah. And it's like, it must, they must do it for like a, it's like a visual. Yeah. Yeah. It sort is of pretty visual. It's a visual experience, Tom, as well, yeah. as, well as like a sensual sensual one. Is that? I don't think that's right. I don't know what it is. Is it a taste experience? What would you say? What would be the term for that? Uh, aromatic? No, that's smell. Well, aromatic is smell. I don't know. Just a taste experience? Like an oral Do experience? Do you have a vi an oral? Is it oral? It would have to be a visual experience or an oral experience. I don't know if it's oral. What's the, what, oh, okay, if you're giving oral, you're putting something in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, you are. Well, you're using your mouth to pleasure something. <laughs> well, you're putting something in your mouth. Well, you are. But yeah. I mean, like, if I fucking, if I, like, brush my teeth, I'm not giving a toothbrush oral. Well, it's but it is oral care. Mm. It's oral care. Yeah. So and how mouth. do you know the toothbrush isn't loving it? But your mouth is maybe oral. <laughs> <laughs> What? It's a fair. It's a fair question. <laughs> um, oral, not taste. Sucking someone off <laughs> isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the act of tasting a dick. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I bet. Yeah, it I bet, is. I bet it has taste. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not tasting. And me being just sort of the uh, the general way here. It's got to be an oral experience. Doesn't it? Oh, so you're saying taste is taste, separate taste, to mouth stuff? Yeah, because like it's not a what you when you when you're doing a, give an oral. Yep. When you're giving dome, as a, dome. Yeah. <laughs> Who brain. Yeah. Brain. Giving some of that sloppy <laughs> toppy. <laughs> brain. Give me brain. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Who's using that? Oh my god. Oi. Oi, Missa, give me a bit of brain. Like, what? <laughs> the guy, that that the is outrageous. Of, the type of guy who says, Miss, uh, who says brain is the same guy who says, Oi, Missa. <laughs> <laughs> give me brain. <laughs> give me brain. Ash. Oh, it's such a gross term. Stop that it? if that's what you're doing. Stop oh, it. Oh, God. Tobla, why haven't you looked up what taste would be? I don't know what to look for. I haven't I haven't found it it'd be oral. Yeah, We've like, settled it. It Fuck must it. be oral. Oral pleasures. Uh, that's the mai tai. Yeah, I reckon mai tai goes in. I think mai tai goes in. Don't you think? Yeah. Is a mai tai hard to fuck up? Again, we are still leaving it in the hands of the gods of those on the boat preparing them. I wouldn't say it's that hard to fuck up if you're a trained bartender. There's nothing overly complicated about it. You just got to get your measurements right, and you'll be right. That's good shit. I want to back them in. I th yep. You've got to, you've got to roll the dice and trust. Yep. In this life. Yep. You do. I agree with that. While I was uh, doing a little PP break, you know who else has left Rugby Australia now as well as a sponsor? So a Cadbury, as we predicted the other day, because of um, the well, Mr. Wong's. Well, Miss Hamish McLennan basically said on air with Fordham that he was like, well, I don't know if they'll be staying anymore. They're good people there. They're good I don't know people. I don't know if they'll stay. No, no. Anyway, That's their business. Yeah, I got them there, but I don't know if they'll stay. I'm clearly good mates with them. They've bailed Cadbury. Uh, glass and a half in every bite. Uh, or in every block. I don't know what the fuck it is. Um, Harvey Norman. Really? Yeah. Can I, go, can I go bold here? And I am stealing from the great Denon Camp. So I want that acknowledged and I want it on the public record. Yeah. I reckon Joseph backflips. Yeah. Yep. It's all fucking... It's just like when it rains, it pours. Harvey Norman leaving is huge. Were they the super rugby sponsor? What have they done to piss Jerry off? 
Well, it's all to do with fucking old mate, is what I'm saying. But he must be a fucking... He must have... That was the vibe yeah, I was He's got getting. some powerful mates. Mate, when he was on Fordham, that was well, the vibe Well, basically, yeah, that's what he said. Exactly right. He was like, listen, they wanted me to stay on as a director because they wanted my commercial yeah, contacts. Yeah. And he's like, so he no. must fucking know all these cunts. But like, it's kind of, it's crazy that he's just like, all right, well, I'm out. And he's just gone. And they've all done him a solid and gone sweet. See ya. I guess so. I mean, that's, that's. Well, I mean, we're reading, we're we're reading between the lines here, pun of the Yes, that's true. We're taking the, uh, the storyline for a walk. Yes, we are. So don't fucking. We're not smearing. Don't masood me. No. Don't hey, masood me. Do not. If you masood me, you'll be fucking selling ice creams, apparently. Apparently, allegedly. Now, yeah, uh, Harvey Norman had the naming rights since 2021 of the Super Rugby. And they're gone. Yep. Wow. The naming, that's a big fucking, that's a big chunk of change. You know what they're going to have to do? Who the fuck's going to want to put their brand to that? You know what they're going to have to do? They're going to have to get down low and and take fucking Twiggy Forest. All of him. Oral Twiggy. He's a billionaire. (laughs) Yes, he is. They need money. They he, need a billionaire. He also loves rugby union. He fucking loves it, dude. <laughs> they need to go down on that man. I think they might. Like, it wouldn't shock me anyway. Like, who the fuck wants to sponsor Super Rugby, respectfully? Maybe maybe mates of ours step up. Mates of ours? I reckon our mate might step up. Not going to name him. But they might go big. Who the f- Oh, who's our mate? Bing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, never, fuck, we never got, did we get acknowledged by the Bings? Oh, I think we got acknowledged by Bing Lee's social account, which, I mean, I would have liked a video message from Yenda personally, but you can't have it all. Geordie, if you're listening, can, can you arrange something from your grandmother? If you could get Yenda to give us a shout out, dude, and even if it's just a private one, that would mean a lot, or even if it's an audio message. Just to Tom and I. We don't yeah. have to play it on the podcast if, the, if, if Yender doesn't want it. It'd be if we could, it. but if Yender wants to keep, you know, Yender might be a private lady and I don't want it to ever be seen or misconstrued that we would be disrespecting the great and powerful Yender Lee. Which is, she's the best in the business, Tom. Of course she is. So she's respect the, where respect well, is due. the matriarch of the Lee dynasty, all I'm saying is... She's the matriarch of the of white goods, generally. She's the white goods czar. Worth just mentioning, just just I'm throwing it out there. Given an opportunity, I don't think anyone could move white goods like Tom and I. I'm just putting it out there. It's worth it. See how it feels. And everyone needs white goods. Everyone. Just saying. If there was an opportunity that popped up for us to be in an ad with Yenda Lee, would that be a high watermark? Yes, it would. Would it make sense? Maybe not, but maybe it would. I think it would. I think it would. I think you just, I think you're, you're allowing, we, because what Tom and I would do, would be, we'd bring out the best in Yenda, or we'd die trying. I'd die trying. You know? I'd, but to be honest, I don't think it'd, I'd, I also think that Yenda gets the best out of herself anytime she steps in front of the mic anyway. So I don't know if we can take it to another level. I think it's kind of like Yenda is redlining in terms of greatness consistently every time she steps behind the microphone, right? With her and Lionel. Yep. But who we listen, we respect Lionel and his work, but Yenda, fucking oath we do. But Yenda, she been there. She that. been there, she done that, she best in class. But it's like the Mai Tai. Mm-hmm. Individually, all of these things that make a Mai Tai are terrific on their own, but it's only once putting them to... And you, and you could argue they are as good as they can could be possibly, like a pineapple, for example. But then you put them all together. Mm-hmm. So the Mai Tai here would be you, me, yep. and Yenda Lee, yeah, which exactly. sounds like a name for a film. Then that is a whole new thing. And you're like, oh, well, obviously Yenda Lee with you and me yeah, that's that's oh, it can get better. It can get better. It it is it, exactly right. It's like there's dribble and then there's yarn. And but then if there's you put yenda. them to, and and then if you put them together, it's dribble and yarn. Dribble yarn and yenda. Dribble yarn and yenda. I'll take it a step further. You could also think about it this way: my tires are great, but then your best mate, your close personal friend Ronnie Blakey, 
gets in touch and goes, try this Mai Tai, and then it goes to another, another level. So what we're saying is, we can sell the shit out of white goods. We just need Yender to believe and to give us a shot. Believe. Or at the very least, just get Geordie, yep. is it, to get Yender to send us a little fucking audio message or a video. Well, I think that's just where we, we kick things off. You send us one, we'll send one back. We'll all send of a one. sudden, all Play of a sudden. Play this to Yenda. Play this to Yenda. Yeah. I'm sure she won't be, like, I'm sure she'll enjoy the show. I think so. She, listen, she's a media gal as well. She gets it. Listen, she, she's our cup of tea. She, she'd know a way around a film set. You know what I mean? Fucking oath. Good Mai Tai. I'm ready for my next cocktail, Dave. Shockingly. What are we feeling next? What are we feeling next? Margarita Tommy's Because we need to see if they'll dance City, Yeah they yeah. do need to dance They need to dance Would you like your Tommy's with a salt rim? No thank you Straight No, no thank you uh, Gets in the way in my opinion Just wanted to say do something half, Do a half salty for me please David I know that Tom and I have have, have have mused about the Centerpoint Tower before We're yet to go up there and oh, The revolving restaurant To the revolving restaurant That Needs to be done soon. Yes. I was also, I was just, I was looking at that fucking thing today and I thought to myself, who's in the lower levels? Are there offices up there? Yeah, what's everyone doing up there? What's the point? Is your office in Centrepoint Tower? If it is, reach out. I, um, I also don't know why they ever took those wire fucking athletes off the top of it. They were there for the Olympics. I know why they were that there. That was 20 years ago. Why would you take them down though? They were cool. Oh, you liked them? You didn't? I, I liked them when they are up there And I, I liked what they represented At the yeah. Olympics Yeah yep. Fucking keep them up You wanted to keep them up Well fuck man Can we what? get a photo of them up please I want to see them again Like I don't understand why you wouldn't When do you reckon they'll take the tower down it's, It'll happen eventually You reckon I don't know if it will How the fuck You reckon it'll be up forever Well nothing Is that what you forever? reckon well, That's what I'm saying But like I don't think they're necessarily going to take it down. Like, how the fuck do you get that thing down in the city? The way I think it would come down is if, like, everything I think you just, comes You just down. cut the wires and let it fall over. Oh, oh, right. Like you're chopping a tree down. Yeah. You just got to cut one side of it and then just... Yeah. Sh- I've lopped trees before. There they are. That was when it was AMP building. Yeah. Well, there was AMP on it. Oh, fuck these fucking things. Sony, get your shit together. Your mirroring's fucking horse shit. Yeah, it just is, it, is. Is it Sony that's bad? Or is it the... Well, it has to be, right? Cause it, well, it's the TV's fault. Yeah, it is the TV's fault. Um, I mean, obviously that's... What were they way. doing? Discus, running and something? Yeah, we got to run, discus. Oh, gymnastics. gymnastics. There you go. Can you look up, Tobler, what the fuck people do up there? Yeah, I'm trying to find it. I've never been up there. I have. It's fun. But that's what you do when you're from Dubbo. Did you say it's fun? It is fun. I've been, up there, times. I've been <laughs> up there a couple of times. I've been up there a couple of times. I remember my. going up as a kid and you put a spoon down on the side and then you'd just wait for it to come back around. Oh, well, oh you know, so you bet no. Are you, so you're talking about the restaurant? The revolving restaurant. I'm talking about like the observation deck. Oh, no, I haven't been that far. It's, I mean, it's pretty much the same spot, right? <laughs> I haven't been that I haven't far. been on the other side of the glass. Yeah, right. Okay. So the restaurant's fun, is it? So you reckon if we go, Tobler, we should get bring a couple of spoons with us or do they provide we can you, you can use the spoons provided. Would we use the one would we use one spoon or should we should we all have one? We could also use a fork and a knife so we know whose is whose. Okay, sure. Yeah. That sounds like a good that idea. Like we, a good plan. We've been planning to go for a while with um friend of the show, Ned Brockman. But we oh, well, we're gonna take him. What are you talking about? As apologies for him not receiving an invite. We were going to go to the, we were going to go there, were we? I thought we were going to tuxedos. Yeah, tuxedos. We we're going to take and we we're going to make Tobler and Dave eat fucking. We we're going to pack them a lunch and we we're going to eat like all the best food there, and they had to eat like lunchbox food. Yeah, I remember sandwiches now. and shit. Yeah, yeah, that just didn't happen, did it? Like many things, like, like many things. Not all things, but like like a few things. I tell you what's going to be a good bit of fun: Brisbane Olympics. Not yeah, that far it's a away. while away. Yeah, but it's not that far. Because it's fucking 10 years away. Nine. Yeah. I round it up. Like that. I hope not. Because then I'll be 44. 
You're almost 40 now, buddy. I'm not 44. So you're just going to have to suck it up. I'm it. sucking, dude. I'm sucking. I don't mind sucking. All I'm saying is I don't need 10 years to fly by. No one needs that. How about fucking, it looks like friend of the show, Jerome Luai, going to the Tigers for four million-ish. The fuck Is that four years? Yeah, I think so. Not f- well, I don't, the CEO of the Panthers said the amount of money getting thrown around for Jerome Luai is ridiculous. I'm like, why the fuck do they seem to just be hanging shit on him? What's going on there? So the Tigers are poised to make a four-year, $4.5 million offer. So they've got 1.25. Incorrect. Four year, four and a half million. Yep. Oh, yeah. Four. So what would that be? One point one. One point two five. Isn't that what I just said? One point one two five. One point one two five. I said one point two five. There we go. My heart was in the right place. It was. Your spirit was in the right yep. place. Yeah. It's. I find it very, very interesting, fascinating, even that. The, the, the CEO and the coach have both come out and gone hard in the paint. Mm. Like MJ's in, MJ in the 90s sort of stuff. It doesn't, like, I get, like, you don't want to lose him, right? But you've obviously lowballed him to some degree. And then the other clubs are offering him shitloads of money. I get it. But to say the amount of money he's getting offered is ridiculous is to infer that he's not worth it. And to me, whether you believe that or not, it's really not fucking reasonable for your, the club to be saying it about him. I can say it about him if I don't think he's worth it and I don't. Uh, you can say that. I don't. I think it's, I think it's fucking uncouth of the club saying something. Yeah. I don't think they need to. No. I think it's ridiculous. You don't need to say anything publicly. You've made him his offer. So he he either accepts yeah, exactly. it or he doesn't. Yeah. It's, I, I, think it's, I actually think it's disrespectful. They're like, we'd love to keep him. You say, of course you would, but you keep hanging shit on it. I'd be worried, though, punters and dribblers, and I'm talking here to Tigers fans, I'd be concerned that the club who's won three straight, well fucking oiled, yeah. is they have a price in mind for him, and it's probably around 600 I'd say, mm. and then you've got a price in mind for him. One club really fucking dog shit, that's the Tigers. One club really fucking good. Arguably the greatest, oh, one of the greatest teams of all time. Thank you, Dave. Nice garnish here, buddy. Thanks, mate. Certainly the greatest team of the NRL era. That's, well, except for Manly. Uh, you know, 708, 09. 2011. 2011. 13. Uh, I'd be highly alarmed by that. That one club has him, I'm guessing, around 600, and you have him at 1.125. Big fucking difference. One club good, has him down low. One club fucking dog shit has him up high. I don't think he's worth that much money, but good on you, dude. If you can get that, get it. You're worth what someone's prepared to pay for you. Correct. As the old saying goes. That's the old saying, Tom, and it's the saying you and I have always said. We've 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 parroted from time yeah, to time. From time to time. Mate. The Panthers offered him a one point seven over two year extension, so about eight fifty a year for two years. I don't oh, believe shit. that. According to the Herald. I don't believe that. If he got eight fifty offered to him. He'd stay. Well, maybe he wouldn't, dude. If you get an offer but one of the things said he was getting offered as much as one point four. It was gonna make him he was gonna get like some club was offering him the same amount as uh as Kalen's on. I'm like, which club would that be? Could, only the Tigers have got stupid money like that to throw around. What about dragons? Maybe. You maybe. know, they've been talking Tom Dearden. Fucking Yeah. The problem is the problem is Jerome Luai is not a seven. He's a six. And he doesn't lead teams around. And before you fucking masood me and be like, oh, he took some out of the final, I don't give a fuck about that. That doesn't fucking interest me. It's great. Yeah, but but it's do it like for 24 a- rounds in the NRL. You know what I mean? They're not the same fucking thing. So let's not pretend like they are. My concern would be he's played, he's played behind a future immortal. And that's not a fucking bad place to be. And to transition from there to be running aside, first receiver sort of stuff, mm. I don't know if he's up to it. And if he is, fucking good on you, cunt. Yeah. Round of applause. I'm not not rooting for you. I'm not rooting for you. I'm not rooting against you. I don't give a shit, to be quite honest. If you, if you go out there and do the damn thing, I'll go, well done, mate. 
fucking impressive. I also don't know what I'm talking about. Mm. So take my comments with a grain of salt. In fact, I wouldn't take them at all. No, don't take them. Don't take them. I'm going to vibe and vibe alone and check the tapes. Tom and I said Australia beat India. Check so it. we're on vibe at the moment. On the vibe test, Jerome won't get the Tigers to the eight. That's the vibe test. Nice mug, Dave. Are you, what, would you agree with that? That Jerome won't... No, I don't. We were discussing this on set yesterday. That's right. We were on set yesterday, weren't we? Yeah, we were was that Was that in makeup we were talking about? I that? think we were sitting there in the makeup chairs on set yesterday and we were saying, don't think Jerome turns them around. Tigers, that is. No Does disrespect it, to Jerome. No, just... This isn't a Jerome thing. This is a... Just eyeballing a fucking a footballer. Imagine you're at the sale yards, right? You're out at Dubbo fucking sale yards and you're up on the race so you can stand above the, the beasts. He's obviously not a beast, but you, you get my point. Well, the sale yards you're talking I'm about. I'm at the sale yards and instead of looking at heifers, we're looking at rugby league players. Yeah. And I'm eyeballing a Jerome Lua who's just come into the pen. I... <coughs> highlights playing up on a screen. Yeah, I am a... Wily buyer, you know what I mean. I, I I look for value where I can find it, and I don't overpay. I walk to the next yard. I go. I'm going to pass on that Jerome. Mm. Behind me is a big fat dumb cunt <laughs> who always pays overs, <laughs> and he's got his checkbook out. Yeah, that's the difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom and I were discussing this yesterday. I wanted to get on the set. On set. Yeah, we were on set yesterday. I don't know if we'd mentioned that yet. Um, Dave, where, where was your first vanilla Coke, mate? Oh, I kind of have vague memories of when vanilla Coke first came out. I feel like there was one point in time. Oh, you where, would have been like one, so it doesn't really count yeah. for you, does it? It was, do you remember that, where they like released lemon Coke and then lime Coke? Cherry Coke. Cherry Coke and vanilla Coke. I, I think it was at my auntie's house. I, oh, I think vanilla was before any of the cherries and shit. It was. Yeah, it was vanilla. And then that was it. And then they started trying to get a bit more fucking how you going with it. The reason I asked, but I forgot you were still in diapers, was when vanilla Coke came out, it was a fucking game changer. And everyone remembers their first vanilla Coke. Do you... It then got us onto a topic, because mine was at the Dubbo Indoor Centre. I just finished a game of indoor soccer, almost certainly dominated. <laughs> and I said to my dad, can we get a vanilla Coke just release? And it was the most vanilla thing I'd ever drunk before, and I, I was blown away. But then I'd paired that with a potato scallop. And then we started to fucking get onto, why in fuck's name is essentially a hash brown called a potato scallop. And why are they trying to hijack the word scallop, which is actually a seafood term? Mm, yeah. They're trying to they're trying to fucking trick me into like they're trying to sneak it into my mouth under the guise that it's seafood. But they're not there's like it's well potato scallop would imply it's not seafood. You're absolutely right. But the addition of scallop would imply that maybe there's some seafood element to it. So then you have it and you realise it's just a fucking hash brown. Yeah, so nothing to do with the sea creature, you'd be surprised to know. Very. It actually comes from the French word escalopa, which means to cut in fine slices. Is that right? Mm. There you go. So they're not trying to sneak fucking potatoes They're not in that fine, mouth. though. No, but that's how you... It's like a rusty or the fucking uh, fritters and shit. Like, you just cut everything fine, and then they, like, use a binding agent, and then... Psh, psh, Fry yeah, up. apparently in South Australia they call it a potato fritter, and it's called potato cakes in other states. Potato cakes. That's a yeah. gross name. If you call it potato cakes, you're a fucking bogan. weirdo. No, not bogan. I reckon Weird potato as fuck. cake. I reckon potato cakes a gross, a gross name. No, that's call it a scallop if you have to. Don't call it a potato cake. That's just fucking rank. And so the difference with the hash brown as well is the hash brown inside has got a bit of a mashed texture, whereas the scallop is just like a sliced bit of potato. Right. You're oh, absolute, you're so wait. Absolutely right. Hold on. So a scallop. You're absolutely right. Oh, scallop, potato scallop is not like a fritter. So it's not like grated. What's a fritter? The shit I have at fucking coup every time I go. No, no, nah, not like that. No. It's so as you said. Just no, as you, no, it's, it is just a slice of potato. Oh, it's just mm. a big and then you slice of potato. It's battered and then fried and yeah. then. And Sometimes then it's you get salt. some monster fucking potato skulls. I've never seen a fucking potato that big. Uh, 
Well, that's a good point as well. Scallops are usually generally about that big. That's a fucking pretty big potato. How big's a potato get? <laughs> no, because if you no, because potatoes could be this. Oh yeah, yeah. What's the biggest potato ever? It's a good point. Did were you a potato scallop guy? Oh, yeah, barrel swimming pool potato scallops. Ghost drops. Fucking ghost drops. Absolutely. Time zone in barrel. The guy had a long weird grey ponytail. We used to get ghost drops all the time at Dubbo Aquatic Centre. People used to always show shit in the pool there. What about, do you remember when the Maybe chips... Maybe you'd be swimming laps, you'd see a big log on the bottom. Dude, so rogue. <laughs> so rogue. Like, like it, was, it was the equivalent of having a great white in the fucking ocean, like everyone trying Look to swim Look at that potato. Away. Get, oh, that's a door on that one. That's not real, is it? That's the big potato. Oh, where's no, that No, the big at? potato's in Robertson, New mm. South Wales. Is it? That's not Southern Robertson, Highlands New South Wales. region. Well, it's, in, it's not region, it's in there. It's the Southern Highlands region. Highlands, you said. Oh, fuck, for you. Jesus Christ, mate. Look at you. I'm just saying. Why don't you off. fucking climb out of my asshole, mate? Well, I'm in here now, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well hang out for a bit. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable. Do you remember when... Also, I'm not mad at the salted rim. I know that you're not a fan, but if you have a half salt, it fucking dances well with the with the mug. But I will say that the Mai Tai and the mug very close, very similar. The salt is really what, de- what separates them. I think you... It's very samey, dude. Who gives a shit? Well, let's see. We'll see. How, we'll see what else we got there. I like. I, we got another. Can we make more pina coladas? Uh, I don't know if the coconut cream's still good. It's all good. No, Jeff, don't fucking run that risk. <laughs> I don't feel like shitting myself again. Um, Smith's chips. Do you? This is the only reason I bring this up was because it was around the same time as the vanilla Coke. Some, uh, you remember when? Did you? Ever, did you get in around Austin Powers? Yeah. Gold member was that the final, the third one? Final one was gold member. Did you used to get the chips when you used to get the like the Austin Powers like fucking Tarzoy sort of card? I was a big there? Tarzo guy, but they weren't Tarzos. These were like these were like Tarzo esque, but they were like a uh, little like cards in the Smiths chips, like that big. Yeah, I don't I don't recall. You used to collect them, fucking good stuff. Again, only off the back of Vanilla Coke because that was the time when Vanilla Coke came out from memory. O two, it was first released in Australia. Two thousand two was year six. Hello, Tom speaking. Oh, why do you answer fucking numbers you don't know? Because it doesn't bother me. I find that absurd. I like to know the fuck's trying to call me. Also, because I lost all my numbers. If someone tries to call you, and they intend to get through, they will leave a message or text you sure. every time. Sure, I could just answer it. No, nah. that's not how it works, mate. I will do that more than I will a private number. I won't answer privates. I won't answer phone numbers I don't know ever. Because if I don't get a text as soon as I don't answer or they leave me a fucking no- a voicemail, I know it's bullshit. I don't check voicemails, so. I do. My, 90 fucking percent of calls you get is some cunt trying to rob you or fucking scam you. Or, Seriously. Or, f- or fucking sell you something. 90% of calls. Scam you, rob you. Kill Sell ya. ya. Sell ya. It's, it's out of control. Calls. And you'll go through those hot periods where you're just yeah. getting fucking pounded into the earth. Ten fucking calls a day. I'm getting a heap of Victorian calls at the moment. I'm like, I don't know any cunts down there. What are you calling me for? Fuck off. And go away. away. Get out of here. I don't even know how they'd get. Like, obviously, everyone just sells your data, don't they? Yeah. Bastards. Some guy called my brother the other. Oh, my brother was. My brother was looking for fucking, this isn't so much a scam thing, but my brother was looking for somewhere to live recently. He was like, you know, calling real estate agents and shit. And then I think one of them like called him back. That was the guy we met. That's what it was, wasn't he it? He showed you he his, showed number. his number. He showed his number. said Will Birmingham. That's right. Saved in his we phone. We met the dude at the, at the charity cricket game and he called my brother back and was like, do you have a brother called Tom? And he was like, oh, yeah. He's a fucking dribbler. And then he saved my brother's number in his phone. And showed you. And showed me. See, I've got it. That's what he did. That was big dribbly energy, wasn't it? Huge dribbly energy. I was a big Tarzo guy, Tom. I was. Mate, you still got the books in your fucking room. Yeah, remember you've back seen Back home, them. I've seen them. Yep. I've been in there. Yep. Your mum's made a nice little shrine to you back there. Yeah. The Eddie shrine. It- <laughs> yeah, there is a shrine back there. There's a shrine at Dubbo. Freddie Simpson. Now, obviously, your town doesn't respect you. They've taken your sign down. Well, I don't want to blanket the town with that. We know for sure someone doesn't. 
yeah. bloke that took it down. Yeah, it, listen, he, the guy that took it down tried to imply that someone notified him. I think that... Call him bullshit on that, mate. He may have just done it himself. He just took it down. You, 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 someone alerted you to the fact and you went and took it down and pretended like someone told you to do it. Don't believe it. No, 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 no. He's not saying... He's the, he, he's the head... I think he's the grand poobah of fucking... He is. Sign removal. So yeah. like he 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 wasn't he never said that someone else told him to he just said that someone alerted him to the fact that no he said higher ups told him did he yeah did you read the message yeah oh I thought he just said he did. he's the head isn't he who's higher than him the mayor you think this went all the way to the mayor that's what he implied he said the mayor's gone <laughs> which the mayor wouldn't do surely the mayor's looking to no, the mayor, big I, up you know the notable members of the town li- listen. The mayor's smarter than that, wilier than that. Tom, the resto bar's going in at Newcastle. We talked about that. Yeah, I know. They've, they've branched out. They could fucking... We could open a bloody resto bar in Sydney. I reckon it'd pump its little dick off. Might get in touch. I just don't know if I've got the time nor the inclination to run an Indian restaurant right now. I've oh, got the inclination. I don't have the time. Oh, you think we'd be on the ones and twos? Yeah, we'd be on the puppet arms. I could see you serving puppetums. I'd be eating most of them. I'd be a, I'd be a huge problem. Like, where's all the puppetums? They get made. I'd eat them, and you, the tray you, would be empty. You're a puppetum guy. Who isn't? What do you think's better, a puppetum or like the the pink Chinese the, the biscuit? Pink th- uh, the prawn puppetum. crackers. Prawn crackers. Is that what they call? Prawn. Yeah, prawn crackers. I think puppetums because they're more pure and honest. And like, I don't know what the fuck those pink things are. You know what I mean? Because if they're prawn, that's not how a prawn looks. But that's what they call prawn. C- prawn. Prawn. What are they called? Crackers, prawn crackers. Prawn crackers are almost a half food, half foam hybrid. That's all it is. It's like I wouldn't be surprised to see them like used to pack boxes. You know what I mean? Like you get a TV filled with stuff. prawn crackers. I know, but why can you eat it? Mixing prawns, tapioca flour, and water. The mixture is rolled out. Nothing in like those three photos there. None of them are prawn crackers. They are, but they're, they're just not. not they're not pink. Time for some dribbles. Now, you may remember a couple of weeks ago we asked for, well, a dribbler actually I think called up and was like, where's the Christmas carols? Um, we also need to get Dave on our next cocktail. Let's do a Cosmo, please. Um, we'd said that we, oh, the dribbler was like, whatever happened to the old Christmas carols? Because every year dribblers would, around this time of year, dribblers would start sending in their dribbler carols. Finachario came to mind. There was, I think, Simon, Simo Maurice Edgel maybe did one. Uh, Baggy Green, members of Note. We called for it again, and I think Dave may went and found some old ones for some inspiration because we still want more. I think we've got one in, though, which is both positive and negative because I would have liked a fucking full album's worth of dribbler carols, but, you know, you can't... I get some people are scared to, like, to bear their soul in a Christmassy vibe, in a Christmassy way. Which is a real shame. It's a shame. Um, you got your tree up yet? No, not in November. Have you? Thinking about it, getting it. You thinking about getting it up already? Well, I haven't got one yet. No, we're getting a Faco. Why? Because of the children, and they're just gonna fuck it up. Better just have one that's just easy, simple. We also don't have a shitload of space for a tree. No, I get that. You gonna? Are you going? Are you getting lights out the front? Yeah, I'll do some light work around the fucking driveway and stuff. You got a, You got a. You got a good house now for light work. Yeah, we were yeah. there last year. Think you were, it just didn't pull your weight. No, well, it was just there was too much going on. Was so, there? Yeah, there was. Yeah, big excuses, guys. Well, no, we just moved in, and I think your daughters was, would really like it. If you no, they up. would. We yeah. did it. We did it when we were in fucking Bellevue yeah, so Hill, you, mate. Yeah, not a big weight guy. No, that's fine. Absolutely not. We just moved in, and there was and you shit couldn't be everywhere. Fucked. No, we couldn't because also Zoe we couldn't be trusted around Christmas shit. What you couldn't put lights up out the front? Oh, lights out the front, I could have done. That's fair. Could have done that. Could have done that, own that, that's me, could have done that, but I didn't. I actually put lights up out the back. Still pumping. They were solar powered, solar powered ones. I haven't even touched them, just wrapped them in a fucking tree, and they just go. Go. Let's get to these. Can we play a couple of the old dribbles? Yeah, we got a clip from um, episode 247. 247, wow. Jeez, we've been going a long time, eh? Hey. Hit it. Is it time for dribble? Yeah. Yeah, the next starred one is Finicharios. Turn up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fucking hell. Repent all ye turncoats, Nilso and Dior. Dave, repent. Burn your jerseys. May thy souls be saved. 
great voice. He's got a great voice. <laughs> Just like this is what absolute yeah. like just unadulterated I pure. Love it. It's a, I love this it. is Christmas this dribble. This is Christmas dribble. We have Christmas cheer. We spread Christmas dribble. There's no excusing that behavior. You make us sick. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I'd completely forgotten that song. Dior Dave, well done, Coach. By Christmas Carol, there from Finicario. You, you got the Randwick thing reason. wrong. Yeah. That was all so right. then Maurice Edgewell did one. I don't know who's the other one. Hello, Tom, Eddie. Big cheese here. Cheese. I hope you're keeping well. Shit. It's the twenty-first of December. It's time to lick Dior to hell. Oh, were these Dior Christmas cows? I'll they be must on have been. my best behaviour. I don't know. Okay, he's getting fucking roasted. Just get him off the show by July. Come on, one year's enough. And don't you give him gifts on Christmas Day. Oh, please. Just make Dave cry for me. I guess his brothers are driving down from Queensland. Well, they're flying in on the turncoats. This has to be, the theme this must have been be Dave's a turncoat degrees, Christmas so carols. Is it? But would that stop Dave from turning his coat? Like how do you nah, check no check way. way. Was it, was it about being a and who's Dave going to go for the, now? I didn't check what the ask I bet he won't say Yeah, yeah, so. it must have been. They're must both about him. But so there's good. more than this as well. And I mean, it's like, I don't know where the fuck they would be. So I'm like... And he doesn't even show remorse. Even though he's a massive wank, so fuck you, David. <laughs> Are you from Bondi? Or from South Africa? I need to know, don't lie. And I love St. Peter. I've been thinking of him early Christmas morning when I call the dribbler hotline. <laughs> David's got a new team now. All right, I think that's uh, that's good. I wish I could hold him. Um, what were you lighting up there, Dave? So it's a little thing. When you put a, uh, a citrus peel in a cocktail, what you really want there is the oils that live in the skin of the citrus peel. So do it on camera. Do another. You get a little lighter. And then you just. Oh, the fanciness. So you get so the that, oils out. So that releases the oils. Well, the oils are released by squeezing it. The lighter is just, you know, a bit Wank. fancy. Yeah, yeah, right. It's a bit of fucking pomp and pageantry. Um, so look, there are two examples. There was some fucking, there's way more Christmas carols. And I don't remember where they were, but I remember there being plenty more. Because um, we, were, we were discussing an album. Maybe that's how we went in Aria. Best Christmas release. Like it, like it. Now we, we get to we get to yeah, we got a new one from Regan Star. The not a bad name. It sounds like Ringo. It does. Hey, just before we get going, Eddie, here's to us, mate. Cheers, buddy. Here's to the set, the film set life. Shout out to Cosmos. Shout out to Cosmos. Shout, Shout out to, to Cosmo films. Kramer. Sure. Shout out to Cosmo, my dog. Pretty good. Pretty good, dude. I feel like I'm in Sex in the City. Pretty good. Cosmopolitan. Now, big the, fan. The problem with the Cosmo is the glass that they're delivered in, the vessel. It's not, I don't it's think it would be boat friendly. No. You could probably use a different glass. You don't have to drink a Cosmo out of that. Mate, you could drink it out of a shoe if you wanted to, really. Let's That's what I mean. Yeah. I know it adds. I know it makes it feel Sex like in the city. you've got fucking heels on and it, you're out with yeah. your girls. It's like you've got, I'm such a carry, I'm yeah. such a fucking whatever they're called. Yeah. What's the other one? Samantha. 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 
you know, you're out there talking about, you know, the new dick you've swallowed and <laughs> you've got a beautiful pair of Bottega heels on. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And some like a and a Burkerton bag yeah, or whatever it is. Yeah, and you're eye fucking the waiter. Like yeah. I get all that. Yeah, you're a forty year old fucking uh what are they called? Uh what's it called when an older chick's Cougar? Cougar. Yeah. And you know, there's some fucking absolute dime piece ten supermodel serving you drinks, you go and fuck in the coat room. Like, that's what I feel like when I have a cosmopolitan. You know what I mean? I feel like a successful writer or publicist or something. Yeah, right. Um, about who's like made, and I've made my own money, you know what I mean? And now I'm like, I'm just fucking for pleasure. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, and I'm going to take that, that waiter for a spin. Yeah, in, see what in he's the about. Room, give him a handy under the, under the table. Yeah, sort of well, stuff. he might just go down on me. Yeah, he'll under the table. That's right, because I'm a boss. Yeah, because I'm a boss. I'm bitch. a boss drinking Cosmos. That's in New York. right. That's right. Goss with my gals and getting my yeah, box yeah. eaten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gasms at the table, sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So fun. I'll have what she's having, sort of yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what a Cosmo feels yeah, like. Yeah, fucking oath. That's what it tastes like. Yeah. Can I say something to you, Eddie? And it's it's, it's only this to thinking about sex in the city and cosmopolitans and getting your box eaten <laughs> has triggered in my mind a, a thought I was having the other day. You know, like how you see those articles on like, whether it's your news.coms or your night, like whatever the fucking website is where it's just sort of like, it's almost like honey, honey all that shit. Like dating advice columnists, mm. they are almost wholly and solely written by people who have like the worst dating records of all time. It's like, oh, I've tried this new dating theory where it's like, don't fuck a guy unless he's like paid, spent fucking two grand on you. Or like, hey, it's not just the three date rule, it's this. Or like, here's some secrets to dating that, are, and you're like, it's written, if you were any fucking good at it, you wouldn't be fucking writing about nah, it because... I get that, but it's written by the desperate for the desperate. Yep, okay, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's sort of like, well... But it doesn't work though, right? Do you take advice from someone who's got no fucking... Who's like 40 and single? Yeah, but it's not relatable. I guess you can't write about dating if you're not dating, but... Writing about this is what you should do when you're fucking like if you're dating and and struggling, you don't want advice from someone who's like fucking killed it. But it's written as though you are killing it. It's like <laughs> this is it. Trust me on this. I'm a dating expert. <laughs> but you're not. Well, yeah. Like what's what what garners expertise titles? It'd be like taking dating advice for someone that went on The Bachelor, and they're the sort of people who are writing it. Correct. No offense, but you know what I mean. Doesn't make a heap of sense. Now, I'm ready. I'm oh, ready. yeah, the Christmas carol. Yeah. Let's go. Who sent it in? Regan Campbell Gillard? Regan Star Campbell Gillard. Yeah. Good Cosmo. <laughs> Away in a dribble, no yarn left for me. The bottle of big day gets drunken with glee. The sun shining brightly, bathed in UV light. The bottle of big day, what a sweet, sweet delight. The boys are now restless, the dishy missed start But a bottle of Big Day, the taste is off chart I love the Big Day drop, looking up from the fridge And stay by my cold glass to begin my next binge be near me, my big day, I ask thee to stay For today is a big day and it needs some rosé Bless all the dear dribblers, it's time to drink here For the silliest season is now in the near Near, 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 testicle. 
<laughs> that was pretty fucking that good. That was good. I like that a lot. That was funny. That was a nice big day carol there. I like the big day carol. Yeah. I didn't realise you could say the word big day that many times no, in a carol. No, that was a he certainly hit his big day quota. Liked it. Liked it a lot. You know what I'm thinking, like hearing carols like this? Imagine if you had a, a, a fucking a group of dribblers that went out knocking on doors singing dribbler carols. Holy shit, dude. All dressed as like big day elves or something. With little candles and shit. And they go and like... Caroling is an etch. It's a fucking weird thing. Pastime. Yeah, it is. Like I'm rocking up to some cunt's house and just fucking... Singing. Belting one out. Well, like you, are they looking for cash? I think looking for attention. I think carolers are just huge attention seekers. So I don't think it's cash. But is it a, is it a, is nah, there a hat out? I don't think so. Is that a thing that happens in Australia? No. no it's very yank. Because so. it's also Or is like, it English? Well, maybe it's English. I think it's Yank. They did it on American. The Simpsons. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely Yank. Oh, it's you know what it gives? It gives big Christian vibes mm. to me. It is spread and cheer, though. Well, that's what I mean, spread and cheer. It just but, feels like something a church group would do. But like, if I was, could you imagine opening the door and there's cunts there singing? You like, I'm actually in the middle of something. I'm gonna close the door on you. Like, do they stop singing or are they like, we got to finish this song? Because the problem is. It's very presumptuous that I have nothing else to do. I think it's nice. You just said it was etch. It's an etch concept to go around and do it. Right. But if someone was singing out the front of my house, I wouldn't be off it. But if you, if, that's not what I'm saying. If there were some lovely carols going on, by all means, though I could just put them on the fucking Spotify. But if you're going around singing, play on. Although it's incredibly attention-seeking to knock on someone's house and then be like, hey... Stop what you're doing. Do they knock or they just sing? No, they knock on your door and you open and they sing to you. But you're like, I have shit to do. Or I just don't feel like standing here. You'd be so awkward. So would you, Carl. But you'd be all awkward. No, you would be, I would be. 100% I would be. So would you. Standing there. What are you smiling at them as they're singing to you? Oh, this is great. What are you going to join in? You don't sing. Never heard you sing in your life. Well, I can't sing. That's why. That doesn't mean anything. I can't sing either, but it's nice when you sit in the car to sing along to a ditty. I I wouldn't sing with carolers, though. I wouldn't I wouldn't be anti-carol if they didn't knock on the door. I didn't have to watch them. That's what you've got to do. That's the whole point. Why? Because that's what they fucking do. They definitely do that? Yes. You don't know for sure, though. You well, don't I do around know. a caroler. Oh, it's fucking depicted. In or have you done carolin? No, I haven't done carolin. Caroline. It's fucking strange. Are we checking? Are we checking the tapes? Look at that. Started in like medieval times that they would like, as part of the watch of people going around, there would be musicians and they'd walk around like singing carol songs to spread cheer around Christmas time and shit. So that's Started in medieval into, times. In medieval times. It's evolved into knocking on people's doors and like... So what, before, in medieval times, they just walk around singing as opposed to like coming to your house? Yeah. See, that's better. Go back Way to that. Way better. Go back to that. Like, fucking miss me with the bloody knocking on your door. Oh, I've found a thing here that says, obviously today many caroling groups, as you said, sing for charity in churches or neighbourhoods. Uh, some historical accounts claim that this is rooted in feudal societies when poor people would go around singing for their supper in exchange for food or drinks. Which they would travel door to door. Yeah, they would travel door to door and essentially sing and then people would give them food. It's like when people ask you to do shit, it's like, mate, I'm not going to fucking sing for my supper. Oh, see, so people would sing for their supper. But that was year round, not just at Christmas time, I'm guessing. Uh, no, I think mainly Christmas time because it's, you know, the giving season. Yeah. It's fucking the feudal system, mate. I've always bloody had my doubts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, listen. Not a big feudal guy. Uh, I'm not a big feudal guy. I'm not a big feudal guy. I uh, do remember learning about the feudal system, actually. What is the feudal system? Pretty sure it's, it, was, it was like basically when you just have a king. And everyone else is just fucked. Yeah, it's like king. Oh, then they were like, they were like, they were like, surfs and stuff. Surfs, surfs, surfs. S E R F. Wasn't it? Wasn't it? So it's not. So it wasn't king and everyone else was king. Then there was like your barons. No, it's it's king, peerage, peasants. The peerage is like dukes. Then underneath that, it's like barons. I think's last. Earlsy, baronsy, fucking earls, barons, marks. Does it shock anyone that I don't remember the feudal system? Like the Beanies guy. Uh, M-A-Q-U-E-S. The oh. Beanies guy. Mark Hughes. 
Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Were you seriously asking that? Or? No, I said oh it's Mark Hughes. I was like, my God. King Nobles, Knights, no, peasants. peasants. Right. So not King, everyone else, like I said. Mark. Shockingly. Mark, how do you spell this? M A R Q U E S. Marquez. What is it? They're on the, they're like part of the peerage. Go ma- type that in there and said peer and then say peerage. P- uh, a Marquess, Marquess. The second most senior rank in the peerage beneath Duke. But how do you, how do you, what is a Marquess, a Marquez? He's a Marquez. Marquesses. We can surely get like a pronunciation thing here, right? Uh, yeah, I'll get a pronunciation. Marcus, what? Marquesses. Marquesses. Mark, but that's for, that's Marquesses. a. That's the female version, right? So it's a Marquez. Marquez? Marcus. Marcus? Marquez. Marquesses. Marquesses. What a dumb word. And I just mean in terms of like, why would you have a word that hard? That's a fucking dumb word. Why would you have a word that it's hard? It's one of the dumb, dumbest words I've ever heard in my life. Why would you make it that hard? Like, dumb it, word. Words don't need to be that like, hard. Like, where, like, how do you go from Duke, to Mar- so easy, yeah. to Marquesses? Baron, King, Duke, Marquesses. Earl. Easy, Lord. easy, easy. Fucking stupid. Can you try and find the etymology of Marcus's, please? Now I'm fucking interested what dumb ass came up with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. Have we got any more fucking... We've got another Carol, actually. Yeah, yeah, Carol me up, buttercup. Gonna go out. So, oh, like, I really enjoyed that. Not gonna get a green for don't that. Don't think it's baggy green worthy. It was no, great. It's not baggy green no worthy. No way. Sorry. So the etymology of Marcus, Marcus's, whatever... Uh, it entered the English language from the old French word marchis or marquis, spelled M A R C H I S, which means ruler of a border area. Which is a way better word than marchis has. Like mar- mar- marchis. I'm trying to say it French. That probably didn't sound French. Marchis. Marchis. That sounds way better. That sounds like my, sh- my sheets. Well, if you say my sheets. My sheets are in my the wash. Sh- my sheets. My sheets are, are in the, the wash. wash. Yeah, no, you're right. It does. Um, just quickly before we move on from from that, I don't think uh, an accent could be hotter than or a language than the French, and I don't think I'm breaking any ground with that opinion. But like, the French accent and the French language is mar- it, machis, bro. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's machis are in the wash, yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 machis. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Big time. Like, oi, machis. Jeez. My shiss my pants on the podcast sort of stuff. My shiss on the fucking line. Yeah, bro. yeah, 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 yeah. Right, give me his next drib. Short for dribble. In case you weren't following along. Righto, boys. I'm not going to do the whole shebang because the 12 days of Christmas is the most drawn out, uneventful Christmas carol of all time. So we're just going to skip straight to day 12. <clears throat> On the twelfth day of Christmas, Tom and Eddie gave to me twelve big day roses, eleven Burmo sick days, ten Lord's members hissing, nine Kendrick wickets, eight H year old Lou, seven Hacker majors, six days Dioring, five Roger Fabries, four Bert Chunks, three Scotty memes to kill the streams, and a dribbler in a baggy green. Happy horizontal season. Well done, mate. I really like that. That was good. It was short and simple. Short, sweet, to the point. I'm glad he didn't do the whole thing. That would no, have been fucked that up. That would have been. And you know what? That's he knows. That's also what fucking was great. He's like, what's the point? Start at twelve. I thought he was just gonna be like on the twelfth day of Christmas, that and that was it. I forgot that the song you can just start at twelve and then give me everything. Yeah, you'll hear them all. That was fucking good. Again, I don't think you're necessarily gonna get a baggy green. Um, I'm prepared to say that I haven't made my mind up yet, but I do think that there'd be people out there who have baggy greens who might feel a little bereaved was that to get you a baggy green. Now, I also don't give out baggy greens based on what anyone else thinks. If I feel like it's worthy, you can suck me off. Next station. Thank you. Shout out to Jart. But some of the early recipients probably wouldn't have a problem with it. Like, how could they? No, the early recipients wouldn't. P.S. Speaking of early recipients who wouldn't, 
uh, King Dribber, Johnny Ingate, sending me some shit. He's so excited for Vegas. He DM'd us a photo of this nightclub. He's like, fucking this will he be sent us, it to me. He sent it to me. I'm my, like, my, he sent I, didn't it to even, my, I didn't even respond, but I'm like, no, it won't. He sent it to my private as well. Behind a DJ, it's like, do, 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 do. this will be us. I'm like, no, it won't. The kid's excited. Yeah, he's fucking excited. Let and the, I, his energy's good. Dude. Let the kid be excited. I am you, letting you him want, be excited. You want a man pumped up. That's exactly. You want him coming in hard, hot, horny, and ready. I won't be doing that. Listen, I will say this. He's infectious. He might get you over the line. You know what? He actually definitely will get me going. He's, yeah. a, he's, a, he's a chance of getting you over the line. In the right environment, you know, and the right environment probably is Las Vegas. See, I don't really understand Vegas at all and how it all operates. Like... The fact that, like, inside your hotel you could have that going on. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really know the sort of how it all works, but that you can have, like, a full-on, like, club in your hotel. What's well, like at the Star. There's a nightclub there. Yeah, that's not even really a nightclub, though. Like, it is, but it but is. That's, but you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's like, but that's it's possible. what I mean. It's possible. Yep. I don't understand this world. So I'm going over there a little blind, whereas, you know, Johnny Vegas over here fucking... Big Johnny Vegas. He's yeah. a big Vegas guy. Yeah, he's a big Vegas guy. Johnny Vegas, to be honest, <laughs> having spoken it out with you, I'm now like, I think that we need to let Johnny Vegas be Johnny Vegas. Like, he needs to go in. It's like, you want him to feel, to be free to like, to have it all. If you cage Johnny Vegas, you're fucking potentially going to leave some stuff <sighs> Listen, on the table. But you've also got a guy in Big John KD, who... I feel like he's Johnny Vegas. Who is Johnny Vegas, right? Like, but he's, you know, Vegas is is pink coats. You know what I mean? Pink it's, sports it's, coats. It's pink sports coats. It's it's floral button-up shirts. It's trying to get behind the DJ. It's sleaze. It's, you know, it's a good time. Yeah. It's DJ Dex. It's yeah. fucking punting. It's dribbling. Cigars. It's cigars. It's, it's everything that Johnny Vegas is. Yeah. And sometimes you got to let the boy run. No, I've I've I retract any negative sentiment that you I may do what he's sending through. I'm going to leave myself open to it. But I get I get where you come from. You're coming from because at like at this point in the time, you and I aren't big nightclub guys. No. Run out of puff for that life. Yeah. But when you're in Vegas with Johnny Vegas, yeah, you're playing away. You're playing on a different court. Yeah, you've got to you've got to embrace the, the rules culture. change. You got to embrace the culture. You do. You do. And if I'm in Vegas with Johnny Vegas, I have to embrace Johnny Vegas's culture, his way of life, um, to a degree. Not Listen, everything. There, there'd be there'd be some pl- there'd be there'd be some things Johnny Vegas would push for that are just that are know, just, just going to be know, a no. Yeah, but I'm not getting in an orgy. Yeah, no, no keys in the bowl sort of stuff. Mate. Not no, thank you, no, thank you, Johnny Vegas. That's for you and you alone. Not in the room though. No, not in the room. Now, no baggy greens have been handed out, <laughs> which means that there are still there's still a baggy there, green there's there. still a baggy green available potentially two if you love them both. Listen, we did say that we do. Listen, baggy greens are always available. For Not always. Baggy greens are always available. There is always a ch- you could win a fucking baggy green for anything. Not win, earn. Earn. Great point. You can earn a baggy green for anything. They're always available. You won't you won't earn one for mediocrity though. No. And you won't win one if you do nothing. Earn. Earn. Sorry, too many Cosmos thinking about getting my box eaten on the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um not bad the Cosmo though. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Not bad at all. You're probably gonna need to get a Moscow mule cracking, Dave, because mm-hmm. I don't know how much longer we've got. Got a couple of dribbles to do. You look like you're getting a bit tired over there, buddy. It's been a big week. It's been yeah. a set all week. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, true. true. You, you feels like you've forgotten almost that we've been on set all week. Listen, dude, Cosmos, I think, wipe your brain a little bit. They do, but I do I do like a Cosmo. They're nice. I might have another one. Um, but let's do the Mosky Mules. Uh, could we do a dribble, please, Tobler? Or Dave, whoever's running it. Big weight punch. I just didn't even mention it, but it's shit. Hey boys, Ironside here. Yes. Long time no dribble. Uh, quick shout out to the Sherlock Holmes dribbler. Um, thank you for illuminating the path, as uh, is so astutely put in the uh, voicemail that we get before the dribbler. What's been happening to me? Well, I'm a Tigers fan. The Tigers are fucking shit. 
I'm a Wallabies fan, and the Wallabies are fucking shit. And I go for the Bears in the NFL, and the Bears are fucking shit. So why would you go um, for the you Bears? You can understand why it makes it hard to dribble when you've got no leg to stand on. Um, boys, just a quick one for you. Um, why do rugby league people think that they have to go up against rugby union? And uh, why is rugby union dead? A um, few, few quick points here from me. Uh, there's two professional comps in the world for rugby league and there is multiple for rugby union. But that's that's just why the point. Can't we all just love each other? Can't we have a few maybe rugby league players on loan um, just for the next World Cup so we can go to the top? Um, because let's be honest, no one hates the English or fucking South Africans more than myself. So um, cheers. Bye. Love to hear from you. Love to hear from you, Ironside. Another bag green member of No See at the lunch if you don't dog this one, bro. Um, official, official plumber of the podcast. Yes, he is. I've got to, just quickly. Okay. As the rain sets in. And I fart. I We were lucky on our shoot to miss this rain. We were. We were really lucky on our shoot to miss this rain. There was a bit of rain on our shoot, but we managed. The weather was pretty good because there were two days extra for our shoot. For rain, yeah, but luckily we didn't need. Well, they were so they referred to referred to as like reserve shoot reserve days. Reserve shoot days, yeah, yeah. We didn't need them. Didn't need them, thankfully. Uh, although I would have been happy to be on set for fucking ten weeks if I had to, because I'm a big, big film set guy. Big set guy. Now, Ironside, quickly, we love rugby union, but you cannot uh, deny that rugby union fucking sucks a big fat dick right now in Australia and. Even internationally, you can have millions of leagues, but the quality of the game sucks balls. You might only have two rugby league fucking comps in the world, Super League and the NRL, but you would also, if you were not sucking your own ass, be able to acknowledge, I'm not saying you would do that, but just generally speaking, to acknowledge that rugby league is currently significantly better testy pop than every form of rugby union we're seeing around the world right now. Yeah, I mean... From my perspective, all we ever talk about is the quality of the game in Australia. It yep. would, it's probably not going to... And the sh- running of the game in Australia. It's probably not going to shock anyone, but I don't watch rugby union in other countries. I don't watch the French League. I don't watch the Japanese League. I don't watch the English League. I don't watch the fucking European Cup. I don't watch Six Nations. I don't watch any of it. So I don't know if it's good or bad. got no fucking idea. All I'm talking about is the game here. And the game's struggling. And all we've ever pointed out, and rightly so, is that if the Union had access to league talent, we would never would have lost a fucking Bledisloe. We wouldn't have lost, lost a Tri-Nations, now a fucking rugby championship. We would have never lost a Bill. That's all we're pointing out. That's all we're saying. If you can't acknowledge the fact that the hiring of Eddie Jones was a fucking one of the great fuck-ups all the time, Hamish McLennan now left and taken all the sponsors with him, Am I missing something? But also, he's like, oh, you know, why do rugby league people always have to compare themselves to rugby union? I'm like, I don't anything. think that rugby league really does that. What are we comparing? I think that, like, if you were to use you and I as the uh, example here, thank you, David. Uh, my microphone is cutting in, or my headphone. Maybe you're staying on the cord. Um, we talk about sports. So we talk about rugby union and we talk about. Uh, rugby league if rugby union is falling apart at the seams and becoming a fucking diabolical shit show then we will discuss that and it makes sense to not necessarily compare but you are speaking about other codes in the country that aren't shit like rugby league we're not talking about AFL because we don't watch AFL so I don't know about comparison because there is no comparison rugby union sucks in Australia what no one has their head in the sand more than a, than a union fan. Yeah. It's crazy. I know. Like he thinks rugby league people are there. like why are rugby league? It's like no. You guys should be better. Like rugby union should be better. But also, let's not fucking pretend like you wouldn't be shitting all over rugby league if it sucked. If the if the tables were turned, union people would be shitting from a great height, Masood style. Well, McLennan, On to rugby league. McLennan was trying to at the start of the year, and we liked it. He was taking a bit of a rugby We actually got approach. around him. We did get around him. And then we quickly changed our tune. Um, I don't, is, is Ironside on that uh, – what's the rugby podcast that's called, like, the Pig Athletic? Pig Athletic Club? Don't know, I think they're he? based out of Brisbane. But I've seen Ironside on there a few times. Maybe he's mates with them. 
if he's on it. Um, Tobler, how many RSVPs have we had to the Baggy Grand Long Lunch? Um, we've had about seven. Seven? Yeah. Fucking Moscow mules get into their work. Does seven seem a bit light? Yeah, but I also don't RSVP to anything. If you, if you don't know, RSVP, you're not coming. Well, no, of course they're not. Well, look, there's a few interstate dribblers. I mean, it's, you know, how many, how many fucking invites are? I don't even know how many people we send out. There's like 25 now, I think. Shit, guys. There's a few, few members. Well, there you go. We'll save on the bill. Or we'll just spend it all and go large with the people that are there. No, no, no. We'll go fucking huge. Okay, well, who's, who's actually paid? Um, Jorge all day Fuck has... Fuck yeah. Of course he has. Jorge wouldn't miss one. No. It's not his style. No. Um, Patrick Irwin. Yep. Uh, Sam Robson, the... Man, the turbo trading cards. You're gonna have to tell me who these cunts yeah, are. Yeah, so neon like I sign. Um, neon sign. That was Jason. Yeah. Yep. Who is? Uh, go back because there was there was a few. Jorge. We know. Jorge. Yeah. Yeah. Neon sign. Jason. Yeah. Yep. Wrestling belt. Yep. Uh, Hold on. Who's wrestling? Say their name as well. Oh. Jesus fucking Christ, dude! What do you say? Their name and then what they got their baggy green for. Trying to find his name. Yeah, Dave's mic's down. He just called you a rookie, though. Oh, um, sweet. How about Tobler? Fucking wrestling belt. <laughs> I can't remember his... I can't find his name at the moment. But oh, the guy who gave God. us the about even wrestling belt. Right. He, and it was... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Matt of Marino Wool. Yeah, yeah. The fame. stolen the stolen fucking... Uh, Finachario's in. Yes. Um, Brett Campbell of, ne- of Dartboard fame is yep. in. Yep. If you said to me, does Brett Campbell have a bag of grain? I would have sort of, no. Nah. No disrespect to Brett. I've just, the names, the names mean nothing yeah. to no, me. No, well, we'll have name tags on what you get your bag of grain for. Forgive me, Daniel Bowen of Wrestling Belt fame. Daniel Bowen. I was going to say Daniel. Uh, Tate Bailey of Last Dribble Fames. Yeah. See, I know Tate. No, Tate Bailey. And I know Jelly Shot Kid. Is Jelly Shot Kid, has he RSVP yet? Has an RSVP yet. That little yet. fucker. He was the last one. Good. I, I like Jelly Shot Kid. Probably not a kid anymore. He's been fucking... He's probably jelly shot man these days. Nah, he was at the fucking marathon thing. He's he still looks like he's a kid. He's still a kid. He still looks he's like still a kid. He's still a kid. And that's it. That's it so far. That's fucking pathetic. A couple of who, who... Someone DM'd us the other day. It might have even been Tate Bailey. I can't remember. He was like, listen, punters and dribblers, and I mean only Baggy Green members here, but December 22, the Baggy Green long lunch, not to be missed. What about even like your Jeff Athletics of the world? Um, but Baggy Green What about Ned lunch. Brockman? He said he's coming Okay So put him down um, Baggy Green Long Lunch It's going down Whether you're there or not But Get back to Tommy Tobler Otherwise you're fucking not We're gonna up. We're gonna fucking Send it mm. Know that Dude Steph was Steph had a fucking Christmas party the next day And I was like Jesus Christ This is gonna be tough I'm gonna have to go and rip, I'm gonna have like a big old you know, summer solstice, longest day of the year. Are they wearing out. crazy hats? No, but it's not on. She got the dates wrong. Oh, it's tonight. Actually. Didn't they used to have crazy hat Friday or something? That was their old job, I think. Yeah, they had crazy hat Friday. It was like, <laughs> cool. And it was all on Zoom because it was in COVID. So they'd wear crazy hats on Zoom. It was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I couldn't be in the room for it. Like in our office, it was in there. And that's where I'd be fucking... Like crazy out Friday, and she'd be wearing a hat next to me on Zoom. Like, oh out. my god! I gotta get out of here, dude. I can't do it. <laughs> oh my god! Can't do it. <laughs> crazy hat Friday. Yeah, that's just a way to get everyone pepped up, you know. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Should we do another dribble? Yep. G'day, boys. Uh, just listening to the Jack Bird potty on the uh, Bloke and Bar podcast. And he uh, mentioned Dave Taylor, one of the OG sickies, and just thought I'd give you guys a, a random yarn from back in the day. So back in the day, I used to teach stand-up paddle boarding in Tweed Heads. And uh, a couple of times we got uh, NRL sites down just for some rest and recovery. We had the Bulldogs, had the Titans and whatnot. Anyway, one time when we were at the Titans, this is when Dave Taylor was fucking playing for him. Man, that cunt is sick. Anyway, we were teaching them how to do some stand up paddle boarding and shit, and we had these big fucking carbon fibre, uh, like paddles, I suppose. And as you know, with carbon fibre, like it's light, but it's as strong as fucking steel. As you know. It's, you know, it's got a bit about it, and it had like a load rating of something crazy. Like basically, you could 
put this thing between two points and fucking have, like, two blokes sit on it and the thing would snap. Like, it was just strong as fucking anything. And anyway, we're out there paddle boarding. We had, our biggest paddle board had like a 140 kilo weight limit. Dave Taylor's fucking driving this thing with the ass sticking two feet underwater. <laughs> he's just that fucking heavy. So he was, he's, I reckon he's, he's about 140, maybe even a bit over, just thick. But the craziest thing was this carbon fiber fucking paddle, without even trying to, him just paddling along, was that strong that he fucking snapped the thing in half. It was that hectic to see because it was one of those things you always joke about but we just never actually saw. And like I said, there were some big boys in that tight inside. There's all like the fucking Islander boys and, and this and that. But fucking Dave Taylor, man, was just the strongest, thickest fucking Neanderthal of a human being I've ever seen. And I say that with the greatest of respect. But yeah, I managed to snap a carbon fiber paddle with the fucking weight limit of the gods on it. Anyway, I just came up put off in the head sort of you boys and uh yeah cheers boys have a good christmas hectic he was such a talent. And again, Oi. like, you know, he's, yeah, he, he he had a good he like, you know, he played for Australia, he played Origin, but like, fuck me dead, if that guy really applied himself, he could have been fucking anything. Shout out to Guru. Shout out to the to the big fella. I hope he's doing well. Big Dave Taylor. Could I hope you, he's out there chucking he, nuts. Has somewhere. he got an Instagram or some shit? What's Big Dave doing? Because, like, I want to say, didn't Aaron Mullen get in trouble for, like, calling him big and thick, even though he is big and thick, like, on the footy show or some shit? Yeah, people had it out for poor old Aaron Mullen, though, really. I know. She couldn't fucking, she couldn't she breathe couldn't, without some cunt screaming down. I know, throat. like, oh, yeah, it was like. She got, the, she got the rough end of the stick. Yeah, she did. Now she writes, like, she writes, like, political news in the paper. I'm like. What are you, what are you snickering about now? Well, I'm just snickering at, you know, when she first came on the footy show, I was very happy to see some diversity and I was trying to support her and whatever. I bet you didn't give a fuck about diversity when she came on the footy show because you were, like, two years old. No, anyway, no, okay. I was happy to see a bit of, you know, some, some women in there. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's sure. what you were calling for yeah, at eight. Now I can't stand her. Why? Because she doesn't have the exact same political views as you. Not the exact same. She doesn't. She has almost the opposite political. Views. Yeah, but do, that you, but do you hate people for not having the same? That's like, ridiculous, views mate. As you? Well, it depends what their views are. Right, but do you think Dave, if we held this, if we had that same opinion, you wouldn't have a job. Do you see how I'm that? Glad do you, you see? Don't. But no, do you but see but how ridiculous that is? Like, uh, in a way, yeah. But I don't know. Maybe if I owned the organization, I wouldn't hire you guys because your political opinions. Right, but that's but you don't even know what my political opinions but, are. No, no, but well, he's probably got no idea. Um, but she is a political commentator. Right, that, that is her job. Yeah, but right? so why does that matter? Like her, her job is just to tell her opinion. But her opinion being different from you, dude. The Moscow Mule fucking it, has it, a bit about it. No, the Moscow Mule fucks. Also, really fucking glad that I, because I'm an eyes up operator, was like no copper cups. Oh, did you call that? He was like, what do you reckon? I go, get the copper. I was about to suck Dave off despite our political differences because I'm a bigger man than he is, <laughs> literally and figuratively. I was about to suck him off for the copper cup. No, he, but he did run it by me in fairness to him. He did run it by me, but I... You made the executive decision. As having uh, the power to veto ideas yeah. or support them. Yeah. Such as... My he, position yeah, as head honcho. Head honcho. Despite your political differences as well, right? You were happy to talk to him on the phone. That's right. I was like, you know what? Despite not being a big commie guy, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer the phone. And copper cups were the go. And so you purchased these, Dave, for the Yes. This is good to have in the office. I'm glad we Wanna ask some something. Wanna ask something. Back to copper. Is copper like uh it makes things colder sort of mug? Yeah. Keeps things colder. Oh, I'm gonna get a copper mug for home. Yeah. Because you know how I like things cold, Tom? Yeah, you're a cold guy. You could have a fucking techie of consequence out of one of these, bro. I was just thinking about pounding techies in this. I'm like, it'd feel a little weird, like, sipping techie like I'm having a cup of tea, but with a copper cup. Not imagine to be mistaken for Cooper cup. Imagine a, imagine a bit of the sweetness, that, that sweet nectar hitting your lips here, bro. Mm. Mm. Dude, I think we definitely just bring some ginger and some vodka. Well, I'll just say, I'll just board. say, listen, we've got a couple of big ginger operators on board, and there's obviously already going to be vodka, and then we'll just mule it up. It's not the ginger beer. It's not, so it's just ginger beer and vodka. Yep, and a squeeze of lime. Fuck, dude, that thing fucks. That's a that's a 
That's a bloody nice thing on a hot day. Mm. You've also got the option if we had ginger beer on board, dark and stormy, rum and ginger beer. So that's dark and stormy, and a yep. Moscow meal is with the vodka. Yep. Like I'm learning. We're learning. Everyone's learning, dude. We're all learning. We're all learning. Except Dave, who just won't ever. He'll come around. <sighs> he's still young. He's, he's still young. But I mean, at some point, he's going to have to realise. You know what Dave needs? You know when you see like those movies where like, I'm just, I don't even know if this happened in Last Samurai, but I'm just going to say it did. But like, you know, Dave goes, Dave, say Dave gets marooned, like a plane goes down in another country where he has political differences with them. And then... He's like lot stuck on this island and he hates them and they hate him, but then he falls in love with someone from the p- other side of the political So like aisle. basically like landing in America. Correct. But he falls in love with someone from the or other Australia. side. Well, not, well, to be honest, there's some pretty blue haired motherfuckers in all of those places. But Dave falls but, in but, love with but someone but on the other side. he's anti-capitalism. Sure. You're right. But what we And democracy. Is, not a big voter. No, he's not a big voter. Not a big democracy well, a big guy. Voter. No, no, no. I not. vote. No, no, no. What about if he, he falls in love with You're someone a big who... dictator What guy. about if he falls in love with someone who doesn't have blue hair? You know what I mean? And he then, through realising that even though he shares a difference of opinion with someone, he can still love. That is... That's almost a, a progressive sort of rom-com mm. where you've got a really opinionated communist who falls in love with someone who he finds out is a fascist. Yeah, well, a capitalist pig, literally. Or a a big, fat capitalist pig is probably a better term because capitalists are very in vogue at the moment. He falls in love with a big, fat capitalist pig. But he's like, but I love this pig. Yeah. But I don't like what the pig pig's stands for. <laughs> but I, and yeah, I don't how like do we, how rich the pig is. Yeah, the pig's got so the much The pig's cash. got so much money. And I love going to the piggy's Aspen fucking chateau. Yeah, the piggy And I love the piggy's fucking, private jet. Yeah, and and the, I love the piggy's dom. And I love the piggy's fucking... At home theatre. That's right. And I, I love that the piggy gets me weed. Yeah, I love the piggy's dealer. And I love the piggy's <laughs> fucking... You know, yeah. uh, three-hatted chef. Yeah. Like I like, all, I like, I like the piggy's tremens. And uh, the piggy keeps me coming every night. Yeah, yeah. The the piggy finishes me. So like morning yeah, and yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. But but I have a uh, moral opposition to the piggy's to political the piggy. views. But 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 at the end of the movie, he goes, "You know what? Life's." Bigger than that. And you can't I'm gonna, agree on everything. And I'm going to choose that PJ life. I'm going to choose to love the pig, not the views. And you know what? Celebrate our differences. Because you can... This old, this old fucking blue-haired fuck over here is like... Wants diversity, but he doesn't want diversity of opinion. He just wants diversity of like basically gender. <laughs> like that's all he wants. Yes. But if you've got a different opinion to him, then I hate you. So we've got to try and get Dave to love pig. The that's, a, that we sh- that's a good shirt. Diverse genders, not opinions. Yeah. That is a good shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I have found... But a, we still love you. Yeah, see so what I mean? We still love you, dude. We still love you well, like that, a son. That's your problem, not mine. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. you got to let love into your heart. I have lots of love in my heart. Just for not a enough, specific man. amount of people. Not I, love. I have found a movie which almost fits this description. Uh, it's a <laughs> French movie. It was Bracey in it? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the guy who's in it looks a bit like a French bracy. Um, so it's a French film called The Names of Love or Le Nom de Gênes in okay. France. Yeah. In French. Uh, the synopsis is a young extroverted left-wing activist who sleeps with her political opponents to convert them to her cause is successful until she meets her match. <gasps> that sounds pretty good. That's good, but also just inherently fucked up that she's just like flaunting that Horse to try and get some political power. Well, it's know? it's the great it's the greatest tool of all. That's the thing; it wouldn't work. You couldn't if you're a, like Dave couldn't sling dick to try and turn people left. It just wouldn't happen. You know yeah, how they left, say the right wing right wing women aren't fucking. Dumb. You know how they say the pen is mightier than the sword. Mm. Well, the pussy's mightier than the, the pen. pen. Yeah, that's the fucking feudal system. That's number one. Yeah, vagina pussy. or pussy, pen. Yeah, sword. <laughs> the written word. Wait. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> just not, stop not it, the sword. Way, you just saw it. Just Pussy stop it, pen, sword. sword. Pussy well, pen. Usually there's four, like in that food pyramid. Well, that, and in the feudal system, well, there's four. It was the, was the, it was no. like king, something, something, Yeah, peasants. no, it was, it was king, nobility, knights, knights peasant. peasant. So we got pussy, pen, sword. 
Word? Uh, spoken word? Nah. Well, that's like the pen. Nah. I think we just do a three. So, so we just, just we just take one of the levels out? Yeah. Fuck it. I'm happy with that. Fuck, we set the agenda. We do. Pussy pen sword. Pussy undefeated. <laughs> it's never lost. No. You could actually put dick as the last one. Dick would be last. Dick would be last. Down. Dick gets nothing. Dicks suck. <laughs> Dicks have no power at all. No. Um, they think they do. They think they do. Dicks are so high on their own supply. Yeah, yeah, Dicks yeah. are gross. Dicks yeah. don't get anything done. No, they're fucking hopeless. And look at the state of the world. It's just dicks fighting each other. It's dicks in a bullpen just thinking that anyone cares. Thinking they're at the top of the pyramid. You could take down anything with a vagina. A dick will just fucking kill itself. You know what I mean? Mate, you know, empires have collapsed off the back of that. that That's day. sweet, sweet, strange. <laughs> but dicks, dude, dicks collapse because of themselves. Yeah, yeah. Like vaginas do not collapse vaginas, if that makes sense. No, they don't. They merely strengthen others. Mm. I hope this is making sense. Are you guys following? Was uh, that off the back of a dribble, all that? And if so, what dribble no, was, that it? was it? It was from Aaron Molan, and I can't remember why we got onto Aaron Molan. <laughs> How are we getting there? She got footy show. She said Dave so. Taylor. Dave Taylor. Dave Taylor. Oh yeah, my I couldn't find his Instagram. God, dude. That yeah, was off Dave Taylor. I'm just going to quickly go on Wee Wee and then we'll keep going. All right, let's go another dribble. <laughs> Tobler, Dior, and punters and dribblers. Australia's best operator dribbler here. So I was at my mate's place the other night, knocking back some big day, and his mother walks out wearing her own podcast world champ shirt and proceeds to say that her name, Sharon, would be best spelt with two ends. I'm just wondering what needs to be done for a dribbler's mother to be entitled to claim that sort of title after the Glenn Maxwell knock. There needs to be an investigation. Digging holes forever, hitting water mains never. Out. Okay, firstly, I just need to understand who this mother is. She, she, have we got a dribblet mother on board? Dude, are you telling me that someone's mum was wearing a fucking podcast world champion shirt saying that her she's a Sharon with two N's. She's a two N Sharon? That's pretty sick. That's as hot as it gets. That's she sounds like a MILF. No. She offense. sounds like I, and listen, I'm not trying to sexualize anyone here, but I can't help what my mind felt when I heard that story. MILF. And two N Sharon is walking around just wearing that shirt. She got an oversized one and it's kind of like a skirt dress yep. top, whatever the fuck they're called. Sharon sounds like a MILF. Sharon sounds hot to trot. And if she wants two ends, she's got them. She's got them. <laughs> no ifs, no buts. Done. Signed. Uh, ratified. Fucking. You think I give a fuck about Glenn Maxwell when I've got a MILF walking around in a World Podcast Championship t shirt? World Cup was fucking, last week, bro. With a couple of ends on the back of a Sharon? Yeah. We'll give it to a Sharon. I can already see you. You got two ends and you're hot as fuck. Yeah, you got a bit about yeah. Shout out to Sharon. Shout out to all the Sharons listening. Sharons generally, because Sharon... Sharons have heaps about them. Is Sharon only Australian? Like, I don't think there's anyone outside of Australia called Sharon. And even if there is on the internet... Sharon long it. for Shazza. Yeah, well, it's Shazza. But, like, there's not... I don't believe that Sharon is a name that exists. Like, it's a culturally Australian name, Sharon. Even though there's, like, a Sharon Stone. But, like, shut up. No, but it's Australian. Yeah, it's Australian. She, I think Sharon sounds Australian. Or she knew someone Australian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, she's yeah, not. Yeah. It's an Australian name. Shout out to Sharon's. Yeah. Everywhere. Everywhere, but especially this hot MILF Sharon who's wearing a fucking DMP World Podcast Championship. And only that. Also, I think that they are 50% off uh, bloke.shop right now. Christmas sale, Black Friday, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, one more dribble. One more drib. Shout out to us. Big time. If you go on the big lift. Huge. We are fucking lifting. Shout out to Dave for knocking up a couple of drinky poos. Well done, Dave. Thank you. Fuck, like, you could you could have him knocking cocktails up all the time. That's you? what I said. I said, go out and stock the fucking shelves. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I want to be able to be mid-podcast and be like, Oi, Dave, can can I actually feel like a fucking Mai Tai. Mai Tai, or a Dark and Storm, or yeah, a Moscow yeah, yeah. Mule, or a Martini, or a Margarita. Might have to start in you introducing cocktails to the streams. Not that we need any more booze on those things, but, you know, a couple of Mai Tais while you're watching rugby league in a winter's night. Oh, oh yeah. Cold, rainy night, a couple of Mai Tais. Yeah. Maybe Negroni. It's the class to join up a bit, you know what I mean? Fuck editing videos, bro. <laughs> well, no, you do that, that as well. Plus, we've got, you know, 
new people coming on board. So we do have new. Well, we do have new people coming on board. That's a great point. A reasonable point you make. Um, aside from England, Sharon is most popular in Australia. There you go. Fuck the English. Basically, fire on our farce. Yeah, yeah. One in every three hundred and thirteen. People in Australia are called Sharon. One really? In, one in every 300... Th- that's hang bullshit. On. That's absurd. I might have got that wrong. You have to have got that wrong. <laughs> one in every 300 people is called Sharon? <laughs> yeah. Frequency... I mean, that's kind of what it says here. I believe it. Sick. I, if, I don't know how what's, that could be What's true? the frequency of Tom? For exa- Thomas, for example. Thomas. In Australia? No. That's yeah. got ENG up there, though, dog. What? Up in the top left. No, that's the language that oh, this website is in. Forgive me. It's Thank got the you, flag. It's got the flag. We'll put it in Australian. Shouldn't it be in Australian? Mm-hmm. Forename. Do you know Jarch calls last name second name? I oh, know. <laughs> like, f- that's the <laughs> dumbest <laughs> fucking thing. I. He's like, mate, his second name. I'm like, it's called your fucking surname or your last name. Yeah, yeah. Your second name. Yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. Uh, in Australia, I should say here. In New South Wales, one in every 267. What is that it? seems like a lot. There's a heap of Thomas's cars. I know there Thomas are. Thomas's everywhere. But like, it just seems like a lot. Don't you reckon? Worldwide, one in every 256. 256. It's called in, sorry, in Australia, yeah. In Denmark, it's one in every 98. In Scotland, one in every 86. So everyone's got the name fucking Thomas. In Scotland. Yeah. Ireland, one in 47. Wow. Get out of town. That's unbelievable. Tom, shockingly not big in Tanzania. One in every 656. Or Uganda. In Indonesia, one in every 6,044. That's bullshit. Interesting. Is Indonesia, is that where Katut was from in that fucking Amy ad? I think so, because were they going for like Bali? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Bali's in Indonesia, Tom. Don't know if you knew that. I didn't remember where the Katut, where the fucking ad was from. Could have been Thailand. Um, again, Tom, not huge in Africa. All right, oh, sure. Or I, Brazil. I'm surprised that one in every 174 people have the name Tom in Central African Republic. That's fucking oh, throwing me. So not. There you go. Good to have a fucking bit there. That Brazil, can, Brazil hate the name Tom. Yeah, they do. Where the fuck is Burundi? Burundi. Burundi. Sound like you corrected me there. I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. I'm Australian, bro. I speak Australian. Burundi. Where is that? Burundi. Man? It's just near Rwanda. Oh, okay, it's in Africa. Sick. Cool. Anyway, just quickly, because we haven't had another dribble yet, have we? No. Um, didn't we say one more and that was it? Yeah, we didn't do it though, did we? No. Oh. Um, that fucking uh, Indian journalist, or he's a former Indian cricketer, maybe. Like, I don't actually know who the fuck he is, but he's someone who's getting coverage. So, uh, after we humped him in the World Cup final, I don't know if you remember on Sunday, we won our sixth. Uh, that's 10 ICC trophies uh, for Australia. The next best is five. Suck my balls. Um, he said, I refuse to accept that Australia is the best team in the world. India are the best team. All tournament and the best team on paper. Australia is not the best team. Who gives a shit? We won the World Cup. <laughs> I know. I don't dude. give a fuck what you but think. But like who, who the fuck comes out and says shit like that? Like, do you not have any self-respect? You look like a fucking loser when you say that. You're a, you are a loser. Losers say that. Winners Losers, win. Winners win. Losers talk shit. What's his name? Uh... This was Muhammad Kaif. Now, did he play? Yeah. Uh, uh, is he a thing? Former Indian batter, yeah. And then even Dave Warner. I like MK. Issue is it does not matter what's on paper. At the end of the day, you need to perform when it matters. That's why they call it a final. That's the day that counts and it can go either way. Blah, blah, blah. Um, like, fuck. That, like, you can, there's good heads of hair. You and I appreciate good heads of hair. India, as a country, produces some of the best heads of hair you will ever fucking see. And whilst I, again, Dave, you could learn something from me here. Whilst I disagree greatly on his opinion about who the best one-day team in the world is, yep. what I can agree on is that his head of hair is fucking gorgeous. 
it's unbelievable and it's got absolutely no quit in it whatsoever. I, honestly, like the Indian team who do, they quit, they couldn't win it. I would crawl into that hair and nestle in and set up camp and just fucking lay down. Get horizontal on that head of hair. You could get fucking horizontal on that head of hair. Like, unbelievably horizontal. Shout out to horizontal season. Very, 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 just around the corner. very close. Just now. around the corner. Um, listen... Losers lose, winners win. It's simple as that. That's it. Sorry, India. Now let's quickly get to this dribble and then we're going to get the fuck out of here. Shout out to the Moscow Mule. And Copper Cups. G'day, boys. Just finished listening to episode uh, 571, Cocktail Consultants. Shout and I uh, took on board Eddie's advice about the uh, telling the miso that the restaurant booking is half an hour earlier. Just wanted to give some feedback on it. Tried it out. Gave it a whirl last night. Took it for a bit of a test drive. Uh, so... Yeah, decided, fuck it, we're going out for tea anyway, so told me missus that the booking was 6.30 instead of 7, and thought this would be fucking great, um, sort of forgetting that my missus is probably the most punctual fucking person on the face of the planet, so we didn't get there at 6.30 or 6.40, we got there at fucking 6.20, um, they didn't have anything for us, so we sat out the front of the restaurant for about 40 <laughs> minutes. And they said, yeah, your booking's not till 7. Don't know why you're here so early. Basically, you can't come in, table the full, table's not ready sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, we sat in the car for the next 40 minutes, and I was one of the great fuckwits of all time. So, um, cheers, boys. Um, keep up the good work and the great advice. That's, Thank you. Listen, Mate, if you know your listen, missus listen, is punctual, why the fuck did you I do that? I didn't think that needed explaining. <laughs> Did that need explaining? That did not. No. If you've got a punch or misses, you're good. Because if if you move it forward half an hour and you're always on time, you're going to be early. Like, it's also not restricted just to females. Like, I'm not, I like, I'm not great at punctuality. I'm not bad. Yeah, that was my own story. It was my own truth. It was your own truth. And that was to relating to your missus. You don't have a boyfriend or a husband. But Steph might be able to take what you said, my Steph, and attribute it to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Or to Dave. We could but also, to Dave. But also, like, I'm a half an hour guy because it seems to get us, it gets us there about five, ten minutes early, which I like. But you could, if you're, if you Pick find, the time to if suit you your scenario. find that you're always 15 minutes late, whip it forward 15 minutes. Like, you've got to, you've got to play a role too. You know, like with a shower ready, you know, every shower is paced slightly differently. You want to try and get that temperature right. It's like every shower is like, oh, this is how much hot you put on to make it cold or to to match the cold. It was like- As in in different shower, like horses for courses. Horses for courses. Each shower is paced differently, much like partners and timings for bookings. Don't just go fucking half an hour off the bat because that's what Eddie said about him and his lovely wife, especially- when your fucking wife is already punctual and you don't have any issue with punctuality, <laughs> you don't need to change a fucking thing. Just go when you're meant to be there. If you, for example, if your missus was like really early to shit and that annoyed you, then you move it back. Tell Do you know what I mean? Up. Look, I'm actually shocked, mate, that that's what you did. <laughs> knowing you had a punctual missus. And, he's, and, and, and admitting as much. She's actually really punctual. No, I respect, sat in the car for 40 minutes. I respect him calling in. I respect that. I respect it, but, but he's it, a but fucking absolute psychopath. It makes no sense whatsoever. Psychopath. It makes no sense. None. Zero. Zero sense. No sense. Senseless. Sans sense. Correct. All right, that's us. Punters and dribblers, big day rosé, the magnums. Big old thickies. They're on sale tonight, 6 p.m. Hellosport.shop. Get in there, get them. They're going to be on sale once, then they're gone. So this is the only time they're on sale. The get, in get in while and getting give them a rip. Give them a rip. Get in and give them a rip. Get in and give them a rip. Get, this is the time, this is the season. They'll be with you for the season. Also, they are an ode to the World Cup winning performance yep. from our boys yep. in Canary Yellow. Moulded off the penis of Pat Cummins himself. Shout out to Pat. Also shout out to the ICC for scheduling uh, T20s three days after the World Cup final. Anyway, not a big deal. Love you all. Love you, punters and dribblers. Fucking love you. Bye-bye. Ciao. Could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>